Oh, okay, okay, that, that's quite enough. Hi, everyone. I apologize for no stream on Tuesday. Um, I just needed time to work on the new Down the Rabbit Hole. I have a lot of work to get done before we show what we've got in Reykjavik. But I... <laughs> don't you ask for more. Before we start proper, I have a confession to make to all of you. You guys know... Let me see... Do you all know... Okay, hold on. No, we're, we're going to get rid of doot, 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 doot. I assume that you all know... I just need to copy-paste this. Paste a duplicate. Nope. God, why is this so hard? Here we go. I assume that you all know that looks doofy, but you all know this face, the, the colon three, right? And then there's, that there are a few variations on this. Of course, you have um, the greater than colon three. You know what? Let, let me, let me change the, the font. <laughs> What's a good font for this? Something, um, Sans Serif. What's like a good default? Times New Roman won't do it. Comic Sans? Fuck off. <laughs> Arial. Yeah, I'll do Arial. Because that's just what everyone uses. Here we go. So you know this face, right? Yeah, You have like this variation and... There are a couple of variations on it, but um, up until about two months ago, I did not know what this was supposed to be. A couple of months ago, I said, "Why do people keep adding that little ha uh, that 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 little that lower jaw onto the colon three face?" And they said, "Lower jaw? What do you mean?" I said, "Yeah, you have the 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 lower jaw on it." And they said, Fred, Fred, that's not a lower jaw. That's supposed to be a hand. It's a mischievous face. I have been looking at this thing like a monstrosity for years. I thought that it was like some sort of, her like making it into a horrific creature. You, you know what it looked like? Hold on. Uh, here we go. I'll tell you what it always reminded me of. Can I, can I save this image? Yeah. Let me add an image real quick so you all can... Wait. Save it reminded me of... Will this work? Yes, it will. It reminded me of this. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be like Bogmire from Luigi's Mansion. That's what I always saw. I'm a <laughs> Why am I like this? Yeah, I just had no idea it was so it was supposed to be a paw. I am a more <laughs> Oh, why am I like this? Well, hello everyone. You won't make fun of me, right? <laughs> Even if I deserve it? Turn up the music. How are all of you doing? <laughs> like squi more like squish brain. 
major squish brain. Are you telling me that we finished a hype train while I was talking about my total misinterpretation of the, like, colon 3C face? Star Shard, I, I know what you're trying to do. I know what DJ, I know the seed that DJ planted in your brain, and I'm not going to entertain it. I'm not going to water it. <laughs> DJ is actively trying to sabotage my stream. <laughs> how, could, how could you do this to me, DJ? Ugh, I have a lot of recording to do in the near future. I'm going to try to be nice to my voice this stream. I feel like I habitually speak louder so that the... Um, the levels of my microphone are more even, but I have a compressor now, so that should help. I don't think I need to worry so much. So, Fred, Hari Selden is the villain of Foundation. Disgust. <laughs> DJ. DJ, I'm not going to turn this into a niche stream that literally five people are going to be interested in. Because, <laughs> like, five people have read Foundation. Fred, give do 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 You want it? You want it? Hold on. Uh, you know what? Pull. Uh, do, 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 uh, do, do, or no, do, 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 dot, dot, dot. What do you want? <laughs> do we want the do, 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 do. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 75% want that? No, you guys can't. You can't allow this. This is not okay. Hmm. Do, do, do you wish to continue? Do not place the power in, in our hands. Yeah. That's always dangerous. I feel like. I feel like I usually know the result, and the result is always the more chaotic option. <laughs> well. I... The people have spoken. And the, there is nothing wrong with the tyranny of the majority. So... This is doo doo doo. We have some subs. I remember um, Plico Plico gave 500 bits just to say do 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 do. Thank you, Plico Plico, for. The 500 bits to say do 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 do. God. Okay. Already. There's so there's so many subs. Marco Japetus, that's what I'm going with. Has been subbed for six months now, and they just say beans. <laughs> Timothy Snyder has been subbed for 22 months. And gives a bean. Did you... So, when you guys first subbed... No, this this was all before uh, we had the had Lauren or the bonus bean room. God, I'm even saying it just naturally. Like, I'm not saying room. I'm saying, like, room. Room. The bonus bean room. This music is so distracting. I can't think with it. Did you think that you be that you would have a bean emote and a froggy emote? Like, did, did is that what you thought was going to happen? Is that what you were supporting? Star Shard of the hundred bits. Thank you so much. Plico Plico on top of the five hundred bits that they later gave gave two hundred bits as well. Thank you so much. 
Dr. Balls, PhD, has been subbed for four months now, and they just say, T.L. Froggy, T.L. Bean. Good. <laughs> Don't worry, I see the feet. Chris Lefordell with 80, thank you. 80 bits. Dead M Punk gifting out a sub to the community, thank you very much. Unity Burb as well, gifting out three subs. Bizandarius has been subbed for two months now. And they say, ah, here we go, didn't ping last time. I know that Twitch is very um, inconsistent. It is very inconsistent with how they notify people. I think, like, the, I have a schedule. Like, I have a stream schedule. I typically stream Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So, they, from 10 a.m. Pacific to 1 p.m. Pacific. But yeah, Twitch notifications do seem rather random. So, like, the schedule is the better thing to go off of. Or following me on Twitter. That also is a way. I, I usually remember to tweet. I actually, because I kept forgetting to do things, I, like, because I kept for doing, forgetting to do certain things on stream, I made a checklist to make sure that I actually get everything done. <laughs> Just embrace the chaos and accept this is your reality now. Oh no, I have a long time ago. Of course I've embraced it. Are you kidding me? Look at the stream title. Also, Project Anderton. Yeah, I mentioned that on last stream. I'm, yeah, I'm working on a large fiction project right now. Um, that I cannot talk too much about just yet. But I'm working on it with DJ. DJ Truthsayer in chat here. Um, he is excellent. A very good writing partner. Oh, this music! This music! God, this just destroys me. Uh, and then Viserel has been subbed for five months now, and they just say, yay, stream time. Hey, all of you. Thank you all so much. And of course... It looks like... 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 It looks Thank you, all of you. I need to I need to stop doing the do 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 I I can't. I can't. I can't. It's breaking my brain. Oh, Drosko with 100 bits as well. Do you got any songs about frogs today? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, Devin Townsend's album Ghost uses frog song a lot. Not froggy song, frog song, the pleasant kind. <laughs> so, obviously Digital Homicide Studios is the thing that we're eventually going to get into. But like I stumbled down a little bit of a rabbit hole. I have been, I have frequently been asked to cover Athene. Do, do, do any of you know who Athene is? I know that Athene used to be a lot bigger than he is now. People have been asking me to, like for a long time to do uh, a video on Athene. Um, and yeah, he, people knew him. People, yeah, knew him, past tense, for making World of Warcraft videos, like, um, parodic ones. You know, I, I, as I was learning about Athene. Haha, <laughs> the capital of Greece, yeah. <laughs> the best comparison I can make, and bear with me, because this is going to sound a bit weird to those who know who Athene is, but... The best comparison that I can make between Athene and, like, anyone else is Boogie. That probably sounds really fucking weird to any of you who know Boogie. Like, there's another Boogie. <laughs> Hear me out. Boogie's career history. It started with Boogie playing a character. Then Boogie showed, no, actually, it is not who I actually am. Um, this is a character, and it is not... It's not like me all the time. This is just something I play up. 
then as time went on and he started, you know, doing more candid, uh, candid content, it's he, people began to realize, wait a minute, actually, there is a part of your personality that is reflected in this character. <laughs> oh, hold on a moment. Um, I think I need to recalibrate Lauren a little bit. Let me just... Eh. Lauren is host to me. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Sorry about that, everyone. Anyway. <laughs> Boogie. So Boogie was playing a character. And then Boogie revealed, oh no, it's not actually who I am, right? I'm not actually this very angry gamer. Uh, and then started doing more candid content. Then it, then it became very obvious that they're actually that Boogie actually was a little bit like that character, um, along with a heaping helping of other stuff. Athene kind of went that route, where Athene was playing a character, a very egotistical character who, you know, claimed to be the best paladin and wow, and just thought very highly of himself, and, um, like, thought he was the best ever. Then, um, he revealed, no, actually, like, I'm, I'm a normal person, and then... And then it, it, later, as people began to learn more about Athene, people realized, oh, Athene actually does have this very high opinion of himself. Athene, though, is a lot more mind-bending if you're just sort of staying on the surface level because Athene tends to drape himself in a lot of irony, as far as I'm able to tell. So, oftentimes... From what I can tell and write, like, I can never... It, it's not like I've spent the the dozens or hundreds of hours like I usually do with Down the Rabbit Hole topics. I've not spent that much time on with, with a theme. But a theme tends to wrap himself in irony so that when something good comes out of it he says no it was earnest like this part of this part of the act was earnest but if there's a bad part then he says no 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 that part was irony and then he just keeps keeps playing the character so it by, by having this sense of irony around him he manages to have all of the benefits of what he's doing all the the, the positive public perception with none of the detriments um, it hasn't, I, I don't know how well it's worked, um, most of the big streamers do that too, oh, hmm, huh, that doesn't surprise me, I'm, I'm not very plugged into Twitch, I'm not very plugged into a lot of the mainstream online characters, you know, for better or for worse. But I like Athene is fascinating to me because he like he had this really big successful um, charity, but he's sort of been writing that ever since. Let me let me pull it. Let me let me see if I can find an old video. Athene. Yeah, Athene. Oh, what's this? This is why Athene is no longer with Save the Children. Oh, so Athene raised like a, a, over a million dollars for Save the Children. And then, like, he's been writing that good, like, that good publicity ever since. He always says, like, I'm doing the all these things for charity. Um, though whether or not they're actually for charity is harder, like, nowadays he's doing more things for charity, but it's hard to tell precisely if, um, if they actually are. But I want to look at this. So, this, someone made a video saying this is why Athene is no longer with Save the Children? I... Okay, I'm curious. I'll bite. I'll bite random YouTube video. Give it to me. 
really, it's so, like people, there's so many people that raise money. This is a theme, by the way. Money for charity that don't give a shit about charity. They don't give a shit about helping people. They just do it for PR. Okay, so they're... Ah, uh, but I don't Vodmi? care about universal basic income. I just use it because it's nice buzzword. <laughs> Everybody can relate to it. It's like, oh, maybe I'll get it one day. Yeah, yeah, good. Think yeah, so th this is one of Athene's tactics. He he always, he seems to say things that, and then later he'll like go on the stream and say, oh, like I was just saying it for good publicity or like, or people like it. A again, he, he says things that are like positive and then he says he was just saying it for attention. And then he says things that are like obviously negative and then he says they're just for attention. It's, it's very odd. Um, for example, the... I'll, I'll show you his game that he's put together later with, with his quote unquote team, which is, hmm, hmm, hmm. I think I care I about the universal basic this, income. I don't give a shit about that. Uh, it's not about UBI anyway. It's unrealistic to have that f for uh, developing countries. When, when, when I do all the charity stuff, and I already said it also on the stream because, you know, like people, like it gives them insight. Like, I don't care about the kids. I always say that, like, although when I go there and I make videos, you really see all okay. these emotions and stuff and all these, because it works. Like, that's what, how people think. What I just want to say is I don't have a core value to make the world a better place, contribute. Okay, you, you see this person standing behind him and like touching his hair? I don't know who that is. But my initial thought is that this is one of his cult members. So, Athene... I'm sure that Athene would try to argue some of the details, but there is a... Like, it's not... I don't think it's his girlfriend. In fact, I don't know if he has a girlfriend. But... He, what he does have is a small cult... Um, a small religious group, he calls it, in Germany. What he does is he says... Uh, so he has this whole religion built around him, this idea... You guys know the A.A. A. Lewis quote? Um, oh, bye, DJ. Good luck disappearing and doing things. Yeah, you've got a lot to do with um, Overlord coming up. Good luck. <laughs> So, um, Athene's cult, the best way I can put it, is the A.A. Lewis quote, um, In this moment, I am euphoric, not because of any phony God's blessing, but because I am enlightened by my own intelligence. It's like that. His idea is, um, like, he, in the past, he's said, if you are, de like, there's, how do I even describe it? It's like, it's almost like Zen Buddhism with some extra bullshit slathered on top. He's like it's it's sort of a it's sort of he's saying become a perfectly logical being and all bad things in your life will disappear. And then he's saying like if you are de like he said if you are depressed it is your fault because you haven't like done what my cult says. Um it's wild. And so he, he puts together this religion and he says, we have, and he calls it a compound. Uh, it's just a building. He says, we will provide you like all of your necessities. If you just come live with us, we won't pay you a wage. But if you come and live here and work with us, we will cover all of your living expenses. Um, I don't know if medical is covered in that. All I know is like room and board, like food. That's that's it. It's it's a very strong cult of personality. But when um when a when people make games interviewed him, um very good channel by the way. Hard recommend on people make games. Um they make fascinating documentaries. When he was questioned on this, he said, "No, no, no. Like the person who's in charge of all of this is um." is my partner, like, it is my creative partner. He's the one who's in charge of all of this. He... They don't make games. <laughs> but then... 
he was also grilled on uh, he on whether he has like sexual relationships with the people who are uh, working for him and he said no it's okay if i like like it's none of your business and it's okay if i have like relationships and sex with these with, with these people at the compound because i'm not the person in charge and even if i was the person in charge it would be okay <laughs> which is wild um he just i guess he just doesn't believe in power dynamics uh, and obviously i am skimming over a lot of this um but that seems to be his position um zumba fitness with six months thank you so much you say help stomach hurt learning about athene is just going to make you vomit in that case <laughs> So he very like he says that he's not the one in charge, but the religion was even called Athenism, right? And Athene is absolutely the public face of this. So he he has a lot of power one way or the other that he refuses to take um, a lot of responsibility for. So I the point that I'm making is I think that the person touching his hair is one of the people in the cult. Um, yeah. I forgot that Athene faked getting raided during a charity match against. Gosh, Alex Ich, like that—that's a name that I recognized from when I was casting League back in the day. Being to side and helping people, I actually don't care about all three. Couldn't care less about helping other people or making the world a better place or contributing to society. I don't give a shit. Kids are dying, man. What if we don't care about the kids who are dying? But it doesn't matter. I don't care about kids dying either. It's all a show in a Fugazi. We promote it that way. Nobody's telling you this is fucking real. Okay, it's a show. Okay, let's say you get scammed. Even if you do get scammed. Okay, what else? So this is a whole other thing. Um, this dude was doing crypto scams before it was cool. He put together a couple of crypto projects i think based on the ethereum blockchain and he advertised them on his stream as a scam and people were still buying in you know hoping to sell during the pump and before the dump that was his thing like this was before all the crypto scams got really popular i almost um I, I almost decided to make today a crypto day because there's there's some weird shit that's come up recently, but we'll probably do it on Tuesday because Saturday we're doing a stream with Mary. You got scammed, okay. I fucking told you guys. It's all a fucking scam. So it's not even an argument. If I go to my viewers, right, and I say, get fucking purpose and do it, you're going to get scammed. And you get Is this copyright claimed? No, it's not. Wow. Then nobody else. You can't go off to the screen and say, I can't go to the camera. No. It's so, like, he advertises it as a scam. And when people accuse him and, like, say, hey, I don't like that you are doing a scam, he says, but I called it a scam. What? So, so don't do it. Like, it's still, like, you saying that it's a scam doesn't make it less of a scam hall of the mountain king is public domain okay yeah but that doesn't matter because um random groups will copyright uh classical songs that happened with um uh the moonlight sonata you know the, the, the part of the moonlight sonata that everyone knows about um that was just randomly copyright what well, copyright claimed um like someone claimed ownership over the moonlight sonata calling it Witchy moon. <laughs> yeah, and a specific recording isn't necessarily public domain. Um, but, like, e even then, like, that that's not the problem. The problem isn't that specific uh, recordings aren't public domain. The problem is that random people will claim that classical songs are now theirs and then plug it into YouTube system. Anyway, um... So this dude is like, it's a scam. I told you it's a scam. Um, and then when people get annoyed that he's doing a scam, he says, but I said it was a scam. That's kind of like saying, 
That's kind of like someone punching you and then you like and then them saying, I'm punching you. And then you say, OK, don't punch me. And he says, but I told you I'm punching you. You could just leave. <laughs> part of the fucking show, man. And they don't know how to. He, yeah, this is part of the irony I was talking about. He says, oh, it's part of the troll. It's part of the... <laughs> it, it's part of the, like, the thing. It, it's, he wraps himself in irony and then claims it as a defense. Hey, Grand Salamancer, thanks for the, thanks for the raid. And Zumba Fitness, with six months of support, helps... Yeah, oh, you, I, I already read that. Hey, guess what I totally forgot to do? Multiple people now. All of you. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> Is the Charles Manson look current or past clips? Current, actually. He's, um... He's aged rather quickly. I get the feeling he's under a lot of stress. Play the field. You're inside your head. You think people care. You think people need a reason? No, man. Why do I want your money? Why? Because then it's my money. That's all. You want to know more? None of your business. The moment you pay me, it's my money, not yours. So shut the fuck up. That's what I would say. In an ad. If an interviewer comes to me and says, like, why are people, what are you doing with the money? I would say, like, that is my money. None of your business. The moment you give it to me, it's not yours anymore. So don't pretend that it's yours. You got some virtual shit that's worth nothing. And I got your money. I hustled you. What you gonna do? Uh, well, we do streams about you, I guess. <laughs> that That's what we do. So this is, this is the kind of person that Athene is. Um... He, he's living on a cult compound where he he pays people like he doesn't even pay people like he he covers their living expenses and that's it. Um, and I think like the reason he's legally allowed to do this is because it's a charity like or it's not a charity. Excuse me. It's not a charity. It's a uh, religion. It's religious and people are coming to express their religious faith. Uh, who baby? <laughs> Konzo Komongo. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, Konzo Komongo. Thank you so much for gifting out five subs. All of you. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> Thank you so much. But this is the kind of person that Athene is. Um, he's been riding on the fact that he like raised a bunch of money for charity a long time ago. But... As you can see, like, this is the kind of person is he's sort of become. The, I guess the real question is, has he become this or has he always been this way? I suspect that this is something he's always been that's only become worse over time. There, so recently he has put out a game that rewards its players with crypto. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, Clash of Streamers. Um, it has technically, and I did check. This game has over 1 million downloads. He claims over three, over 3 million downloads. Yeah, this inadvertently became a crypto stream. Congratulations. Surprise crypto stream. Hey, that's funny. <laughs> so... Kira did a video about this five oh, months ago. Here we go. Let's let's check out his video. Do do do. You know, you get nice dopamine, full rewards, zero investment, zero. Like literally, this game is just rewards without any. You know, you don't have to do anything. You just get rewards all the time. If you play the game, you wouldn't even believe it. It's just constantly the same shit. Like just rewards, 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 zero effort, full rewards. Why? Dopamine. It just exploits your dopamine mechanics. It's a predatory, shitty, microtransaction, trash game. Really the lowest of the low. You can't go fucking lower. And I combined that with that fucking trash Instagram, right? With swiping and all that shit. I put that in the game. I combined it. I put the most shitty things in the world in one soup. 
I mix them. It's literally like fucking all this gacha, predatory, microtransactions, trash, and all this fucking Instagram trash in one. You can add your own, you know, your own uh, presence. You can put it in the game. You can monetize it. You can do whatever the fuck. And you know, me just sitting on the side, raking in that dough, seeing all these people getting fucking milk. So if that clip didn't let you know what we were going to be talking about today, I might as well outline it. We're going to be talking about Clash of Streamers. So th this is sort of a Athene's shtick. He's like, I am scamming you. Like that, th that, that's his thing. And then he says like, oh, that's okay. Have you seen you eat? Oh, Reverend Joe, have you seen, ever seen UHF or at least a bit where the guy screams nothing? Absolutely nothing. No, I, I have not. I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, we'll, we'll watch a little bit more of this video because this explains a some game, of it. A uh, game, if you can call it a game really, a scheme, I guess, a, a project made to make money uh, from Athene, which if you don't know who Athene is, uh, on the other side if now. you look it up, you're probably going to have to watch about eight hours worth of documentary to try and really make heads or tails of it. But he is basically a one of the original content creators, one of the pioneers of being an internet persona around video games and he really like legit this is no joke is one of the first people to really understand yeah he he is one of the first proper internet personalities like i said um he cloaks himself in irony and um says that he's being ironic and he's being honest when he's scamming you um he's he he's taking advantage of his name recognition in order to make money and he's he's upfront about it but i don't respect the hustle i just think it's kind of pathetic <laughs> and what's what what's especially surreal is that the dude used to be a very big time streamer then got banned off of twitch actually during the crypto fiasco uh remember his uh his crypto uh, that we were looking at but when i said he was doing crypto scams before crypto scams were cool um he was saying, hey, I'm scamming you. Twitch was like, you're scamming people. So they banned him. Then he got mad about it. <laughs> it's like, you told you told everyone that you were scamming people, and then you got banned for scamming people. What the fuck did you expect? What, what you, <laughs> surprise, yeah, exactly. Surprise Pikachu face. <laughs> what? Oh my, like, th this is why people are more covert about it, because when you're upfront about it, people, <laughs> you, he says that he's raking in the dough, but I wonder, right, I wonder how much he's actually making off of this. <sighs> so yeah, he, he got banned off of Twitch, he's actually back on Twitch now, interestingly enough, but when he, st he streams daily, but he streams to like, a couple dozen people compared to the massive amount that he used to but he still does it it and it's almost like it's out of habit at this point i don't know why he does the daily streams and they're very depressing i decided to watch one and he he was just kind of sitting there with his face quite close to the webcam and someone came in and, like, was giving him just a little bit of shit. Just a tiny bit of shit. And Athene started going off on him, on them. Like, it started a fight, like, with... The, it's not like there were very many people in the chat. Like I said, it's like a couple dozen people. There were maybe three people talking around, like, around that number. It... It's surreal. It's like this dude who used to be massive now is... Like, has this game with allegedly 3 million downloads. And he says he's raking in money. But at the same time, every day he's going on to Twitch for like an hour and hour and 15 minutes or something. And just staring at the screen. And occasionally talking to people in chat. Does that sound like the behavior of someone who's raking in the dough? Like, you would think someone making all that money and who has this really big, successful scam game project, NFT project, does that sound like something they would do? 
sit for an hour and 15 minutes in front of a stream with a couple dozen people and just stare and occasionally respond the vods always yeah it's it's true farah the vods show like a couple thousand views but i don't know where those views are coming from because someone in chat was like you have 25 viewers and that was like halfway through the the stream i don't know where the where those vod views are coming from Is it the Narcissa Wright kind of thing where he's just streaming because he doesn't even understand what to do? That's almost what it feels like. It's like it's so habitual at this point. He was, yeah, so um, Anastasios, I, I haven't confirmed it myself. I haven't looked very much into it, but there are some very, like a lot of people have accused Athene of viewbotting. So those could be view bots potentially. I don't know. the The ratio of live viewers to vod views is very odd. Ah, uh, we are hitting the millennial version of rock and roll has beans. Woo, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all starting to get into NFTs. Imagine needing to bot your vault. Again, like, I don't know if that's what's going on. It might not be. Oh, did Narcissa Wright get banned? What did they do? That, that wouldn't surprise me. Narcissa is just... It's sad. Because Narcissa was the reason that I... Like, one, was one of the reasons that I started watching speedruns. And then just seeing how... How far... She's fallen is just it it make it, it's that ugly pit in your stomach. Threatens to shoot up the Twitch office. What? Are you kidding me? Oh God. Uh Jesus. Okay, no, hold on. We're getting sidetracked for a moment. Um, no, you know what? I actually can't even show it on stream because that would be showing a banned streamer. Damn it. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, I guess we're not going to be looking at that. Are they unbanned now? Are they? Yeah, crisis averted. <laughs> Oh, you, you saw it too, Naxary? Okay, I'm going to look this up after stream because now I'm curious. Look up an article. Uh, is that TOS? Are we, are we going to find out? Banned for TOS violations. I mean, that would be a TOS violation. <laughs> Don't, yeah, let's not tempt TOS. Naxary is probably right. We, we have a theme to look at anyways. I want to keep looking at this video. Oh. Just DM the clip. Um, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, hey, let's let let's keep looking at Kira's video Stand for a bit selling longer. Yourself as a we're we're just we're not just gonna watch the thing straight through, but to to make money and to build a following and build. Oh, live stream fail has the tweet she posted. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm going to do that then. Old.reddit.com. Don't use new Reddit. New Reddit sucks. Just do old.reddit.com. Livestream fail. I'll just read it aloud. If I can find it. How recent was it? Yeah, don't use Reddit. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, well, it's not there immediately. Okay, last couple of weeks. So it's going to be a, a little bit buried. We'll just keep going with the theme. With an audience. And then he made a lot of money, raised a lot of money for charity. And I know there's been a lot of claims out there that he raised this money and then it didn't go to charity and whatever. I can't prove.
Given his attitude, it wouldn't surprise me, but again, there's no evidence. That, I can't substantiate it, so I'm not going to make that claim. Just Oh my god, was that? It's something people are going to mention whenever they talk about Total the guy. Total biscuit? Uh, but that ages admittedly this video. a cult or a religion, as he, he probably calls it more often, and he has a compound, and whenever any, anyone has a compound... That's probably a little bit of a, a, a B-roll red flag. might be TOS. But there are people living there with him. There's been a lot of claims of, of abuse and things like that. Again, I can't substantiate I think so. this. It's from other people's words. So there are problems with this individual, as well as he ran a cryptocurrency scam, and it was literally a scam. And he even put in the marketing of, of the cryptocurrency that this is a scam. And then when people bought, he would be like, you've just been scammed. So... He allegedly was using that money for charity, and that's the same for this game, this Clash of Streamers game. Yeah, he he sort of buries what he's do, what he's doing in like it's ironic and also it's for charity. But then he also says like, "You gave me the money; it's my money now. You don't need to know what I do with it." And then there's also the question of how is he paying the living expenses of all of these people in the compound yeah i saw droxel thank you uh thank you for getting that for me i'll, I'll take a peek at it i i'm not sure if i can look at it on stream i don't want to tempt fate let me just read aloud what narcissa wrote here we go uh pers oh this is the person that threatened so that's not... Oh, here we go. One of the original tweets. Got it? I want... Yeah, okay. I'm not reading that aloud because this is really just blatant. Uh... <laughs> I, I literally cannot read that aloud. But be, what people are saying is true and it is very, very clear. It, it might be ironic because people use irony as a shield very frequently. But, you know, just I, I wonder if she was doing this as a publicity stunt to get banned, to get attention, because um, Cecil McFly made like a three hour video about the history of Narcissa, right? That is very illuminating. And one thing that is very clear is that Narcissa is just incredibly attention hungry, unbelievably so, to the point that it dominates her life. Just any attention. But I just wanted to talk about... So anyway, Athene... <laughs> it ...as a project, as well as go over, like, the marketing for the project and just how weird this is. Uh, because if it's apparently been downloaded by hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, there's tons of reviews. The reviews are good. There's almost no talk about this online. There's almost no uh, actual transactions coming from, from this game. But the transactions that are coming from this game... Are fucking huge they're like thirteen thousand dollars at a time but they're from the same people so it just looks like they're trying to you know uh, drum up interest in the game by making out you can make a bunch of money but doing it between themselves and if you look into like the youtube channels and things like that that are yeah the success of clash of streamers is questionable we already know like okay we don't know but there are some there, there are a lot of allegations of athene view botting and trying to pump numbers and i want to show you all something I, I decided to do a little experiment i decided to go on twitter a little while ago and let, let's let's go ahead and recreate the experiment Let us, let's see, yeah, let us search Clash of Streamers. What happens when we search Clash of, Clash of Streamers? We have the Clash of Streamers Twitter saying uh, on April 4th, so that's a few days ago, give your hot stories building a new skin. Complete the mini TTTT challenge and claim your new skin. 16 likes, 3 retweets. Athene went live 23 hours ago. Streaming, uh, 3 likes, 1 retweet. Uh, Game24 TV, Clash of Streamers, Riddle, I'm tiny and cute, like to be loud and secret. Okay. I, I guess it's just, that's a streamer, so no engagement on that one 18 hours ago. Hashtag Clash of Streamers. I love my DJ pet. 
on April 2nd. Three hours ago, five likes, four retweets. Um, this person, by the way, Cassidy13k, comes up over and over again. Uh, like, when you search. Here we have another Clash of Streamers tweet with vanishingly low engagement. April 1st. Oh, we have an April Fool's event. This has some engagement. Uh... We have the same person, Papa June Santos, uh, same as up here. What else? We have Cassidy again, the Clash of Streamers with better engagement. Uh, live with some Clash of Streamers and chill. Tanya I, is another streamer that comes up a lot, tweeting about Clash of Streamers. Santana family, that's new. Cassidy's back. Cassidy again. Sophie Darling new. Um, this is... Not even about Clash of Streamers. Cassidy again. Going live with Clash of Streamers. Uh, what's this? EWU Gaming. Oh, this is about Clash of Clans. Not even Clash of Streamers. Athene live with Clash of Streamers again. Using a very old video of himself. Uh, we saw this person. Tanya Uncensored again. Uh, so this is, oh, Rug Pull City, okay. Cassidy again, Santana Family again, Cassidy again. Look, you get the idea, right? It's just the same people with low engagement tweeting about this, but this game has over, like, allegedly over 3 million downloads. Do you think nobody is talking about it? Like, even if we, even if I go to latest, I'm not going to put you through it again. You know what? I am going to put you through it again. Because you all have been naughty. Like, look. It's all just the same people. This is new, but this isn't even about Clash of Streamers. Athena Gang, Cassidy, Clash of Streamers. Um, streaming best NFT game. Hey, Lawrence Gaming. The same, yeah, there's that one post. It's it's just the same people. We have the Santana family again. This isn't even, oh, this is about Clash of Streamers. Elon Musk MVP. I really like the debates. There is a challenger for most intelligent person on the planet. Okay. You get the idea. <laughs> so... Athene has, like, it's hard to say precisely how much money they're making on this. Um, you can look at the reviews for the game, too, and they're, they, those don't look botted as much. Oh, God, and now, now I'm learning about Narcissa. <laughs> There's a hate group that's run by a person like Narcissa, and two of their members managed to reduce their ban to a two-week timeout. Wow. Impressive. So one, one thing that these sorts of NFT games purport to do is offer people the ability, um, especially in lower-income countries, like countries where the average income is much lower, um... These games purport to give people the opportunity to play the game and make money with it. With, um, with cryptocurrency, typically. There was another game that's a lot like this. I'm trying to remember the name of. It was... Oh, I'm sure that someone else or someone remembers. It was almost like Pokemon. It is almost like Pokemon. It's not NFT Clown Hour. It just became a part of the stream. Like, it just... Axie Infinity, that's what it was. Axie Infinity, yeah. Th there are a lot of th like there are a lot of games like this that say like play to earn stuff, and then you can sell the stuff that you get on the blockchain. But these, of course, end up becoming a problem because this business model is built around limitless growth, very similar to a pyramid scheme. Yeah, that it helps third world countries, Chestnut. Oh my God. Do you guys know about the Chrome Orb? <laughs> a, 
a group that was trying to create a worldwide cryptocurrency that was going to start by giving everyone a little bit of crypto was um in a very amway sort of situation was bringing people on to um to go to different areas of the world and take people's retinal scans and the retinal scans were allegedly going to be used to prevent people from uh, registering twice like allegedly solving a problem with cryptocurrency like that people will create multiple wallets as if that wasn't a feature it starts to get very stupid very quickly um, but they're trying to sign up a billion people before the end of 2022. It's called a banking system. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I, I mentioned it before on stream, but the crypto community is speedrunning, making, like, speedrunning, discovering all of the reasons that we have a banking system. <laughs> Have you checked the Clash of Streamers tag on Twitch? It's five people with one viewer apiece all playing with the exact same stream title of Streaming Best Game. I think you're at that point you're starting to get into territory where it is very reasonable to assume or at least suggest that these people are being sponsored. And if this game is making so much money, you think that they would get more and bigger sponsored streamers, right? Hold on, I want to look at this. Clash of Streamers. There it is. And it's got a fiend's face on it. What the fuck? Oh, this is eerie. Look at this. Oh, dear. Look. Like, in fact, I'm going to get rid of Lauren for a second here. Look. It's... Streaming best game. 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 All with a single viewer. I think themselves. No camera. What is this? This is odd. Hello, fellow human. This is best game. <laughs> this is just. Yeah, this is cursed as shit. I can't help but wonder, you guys, what if these streamers are actually cult members at the compound streaming the game, trying to show engagement? Ooh. Oh, that's what you said, Lee Bug? Ha 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 ha. Whoops. <laughs> well <laughs> this is just terrifying and again like this is a game with over 3 million downloads allegedly damn and there's just no engagement is it Ask them to blink to see if they're in trouble. I would, but they have no webcam. Oh, shoot. What if the reason they don't have webcam on is because it would show that they're in the compound? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're all in the same room. You, you think that it's three bots? Uh, do you think... Not three bots. You think it's bots that might... Is that possible to have bots download a game that many times? I feel like that would be abused more often. If that were the case. Well, hey. 
everyone. What's Clash of Streamers? It's just a one of I, I don't even know if it's gotcha. He it's one of those games that just sucks money out of you. I'm sure that they're making some money on it. Yeah, what's really scary is that we got to at least one of the topics in the stream title almost right away, right? <laughs> hey, Sir Zur has been subbed for eight months now. God, yeah, it, it's crazy to see how many people have been subbed since um, even before Lauren. But hey, thank you so much. Eight months, eight awesome months, my dude. I'm glad. I'm glad that these streams can be so comfy. Obviously, the topics aren't always comfy, but I'm glad that the streams themselves can hopefully be a bit, uh, a bit comfy. And hey, it looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. Thank you very much. Um, if you post fan art now, will it get onto my stream? Yeah, it will. Don't worry. All right. Hey, everyone. We're 10 minutes late for our sippy break. Everyone, I encourage you to stand up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, get yourself a sippy, and I'll see you all in just a few minutes.
Hello everyone. I'm back and I've got my kappa. You cannot see it, but I, I have my kappa. I personally am um, sipping on some more Phoenix Oolong today. I was just feeling it. I feel like I drink it a lot on stream. What's everyone sipping today? Oh, Naxery. Yeah, with 100 bits to say hello, PSA for Americans. 11 days to file your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Get that done. Yeah, dude, this this is really good. Cheap rosé wine. Rosé wine's tasty. Not usually one for wine, but that is good. Coffee with donut holes. Lemon water, red wine. Darjeeling. Very nice. One gallon and a half of water. <laughs> Go to town. Carbonated apple juice energy drink. God, <laughs> you gonna be okay. Jasmine tea that comes in little pearls. Hey, yeah, Jasmine dragon pearls. Yeah. God, they're they're wonderful. Com like they're Jasmine tea is a very comfy thing for me. I I need to get more Jasmine dragon pearls. They're so lovely. Yeah, that's what I'm missing right now. Sencha Kyoto K Cherry Rose. Huh. Oh, and Jibzy has been subbed for two months now. Thank you so much. The Lauren, it, a part of the Lauren wave. And hey. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, I think looking at Athene... <laughs> I have I have something on my soundboard just for this. We hope you've enjoyed No Moral Theater. <laughs> no Moral Theater. There's no moral. It's just depression. <laughs> oh, golly. Just looking at a theme really Sometimes when I look at internet figures like Spoonie or like a theme, I, I wonder to myself, is this my future, right? And I mean, I, there is certainly a future in which down the rabbit hole, like for some reason just isn't favored by YouTube's algorithm anymore. And maybe over time, I can't quite uh, make a living off of it anymore. Like, I feel like I'm very fortunate. I, I look at those people though, and I like I see all the missteps that they've done, and I feel like I've avoided a lot of those missteps. But even if I just sort of like slowly lose uh, lose my audience, I still have things set up, right? Like it's not like I don't have backup plans. Yeah, Fred Colt, yes. Clearly, what I need to do is set up a cult. That's that won't backfire at all. <laughs> I was, oh yeah, I, I was chatting with Mary. Mary just randomly called me to talk with me on, on his stream uh, yesterday. And he's like, Fred, what, like, how would you set up a cult? And I, I sat there for a minute and I realized, I don't, like, what would the goal even be? Like, why, why would you set up a cult? Like what? What is what is the aim of this cult? Because I realized I I I had to identify an impetus because I had no impetus. Hmm. <laughs> Spider, you didn't realize that I'm the down the rabbit hole guy. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's my shtick. Um, I make down the rabbit hole. Surprise. Tax evasion. Hmm. Hey, Naxery, if I set up a cult, if I set up a religious institution, would I, I that that I wouldn't have to pay taxes, right? <laughs> Nord guy with two months of sub. Thank you so much. And they say if you ever get the chance, try out Jinjuan sticky rice oolong tea. It's toasty and a little sweet. Ooh. Okay. Hold on. Sticky rice oolong. Do you have 
do you have a particular retailer that you know has good Jinjuan? How do you pronounce that? Jin... Oh, God. Infle I, I had a friend in college teach me the inflections of um, of Chinese... Uh, like, the, the different um, inflections of Chinese syllables. But it's so... It's impossible to tell... <laughs> Oh, Confucius Rex. For some reason, it's not telling me in my activity feed that you're continuing your sub. You buy all, you buy all your tea from Watcha. Oh. There it is. Cool. Okay. Huh, this looks interesting. I'll try ordering some tea from them. Well, hey. To both Confucius Rex and Nord Guy. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> no, I'll I'll give that a try. Hmm. I'm looking at the price. Wow, that's a very reasonable price. I'll be damned. Alright, yeah. Prices like that, may as well try. <laughs> Alright? I hear there's a nice plot of land in Oregon that would be a great place to start a cult. <laughs> oh my god. Rajneesh Puram. Oh, my eye. Ah, ow. <laughs> oh dear Rajneesh Puram. I want to go and check it out sometime. Mm. Any Portland tea shops you recommend? Uh, well, I mean, Stephen Smith is a good default. Um, they have lots of different kinds of teas. That's a really good place to start. Um, if you want to go, like, really fancy and spend a lot of money, there's um, uh, Chi Fine Teas. Like, Q-I, Chi Fine Teas. Those two are the ones I know in Portland. Hmm. Any advice for people on a budget who have only ever had bag tea? Yeah, um... There are some retailers that are just cheaper than others. I'd recommend uh, poking around. Oh, white uh, mm, bagged tea, though. Like bagged tea tends to be very strong. So you want a tea that is going to be strong enough that like you're expecting it. And yeah, chi like Q-I is pronounced chi. Yeah, chi fine teas. I just didn't want people typing in C H I. Um, it's, hmm. I would recommend Indian teas if you're used to bag tea. And in that case, I would say that young mountain teas is a really good place to start. If you're used to bag tea and you're on a budget, young mountain tea is a very good place to start. They also are fair trade, which I personally think is rather like personal. That, that's important to me personally. I understand if it's not for you, but um, it, it's a it is a good thing. It's certainly a plus. Well, hey, we're halfway through the stream and we're getting on to the second topic. Objectively speaking, what's the best brewing method? Are we making this a tea stream now? Um, I like Gong Fu. I like Gong Fu style. Yeah, Evil Gamer is, is pointing out that the Rajneesh Purim compound is now Washington Ranch, which is a Christian youth camp that tells you not to jack off. <laughs> oh, Christians. Oh, hardliners. <laughs> oh, Christian youth camps. Timothy, shut up. <laughs> Dockler Ving, when did you become a VTuber? Uh, a couple months ago. Wait, no. Oh my god. Has it been four months? Oh dear. How has it been four months already? Four and a half. God. 
Okay. So, uh, four and a half months ago. <laughs> I don't know how that... Four and a half months? There's a bird over there. I need to add that to the soundboard still. I only have... Here's what I've got on my soundboard. We hope you've enjoyed No Moral Theater. <laughs> oh, which is very useful, obviously. We have... Hey, that's funny. Hey, that's funny. We have... Wise woman, wise woman, wise woman sitting here. <laughs> Let us now defenestrate. I need to add that. And there's a... Har like, what was it? Hark? I think he says hark. There's a bird over there. Then... You're my friend now. We're having soft tacos later. <laughs> That's just a very good one. And... Mm. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Some nice, very wide potential usage. Y'all, I'll admit, makes me feel less weird than the seductive anime boy. <laughs> I um I really like Lauren. He be, because he he straddles the uncanny valley for me, and that's important. Uh, I'm very sensitive to the uncanny valley. Uh, the the Rajneesh video on it it's a it's a hard copyright claim on it, and I like it doesn't even give me the opportunity to blur out the footage. Like if it gets copyright claimed, you can't do anything with it anymore, so it's unlikely. Richard Yancharski saying it's an academic institution needs to be on the soundboard. Eh, funny, but not terribly applicable. You have to think about uh, soundboard options as uh, sort of like emotes. Like maybe there's a great idea for an emote, but what's the use case? The use case is going to determine the like whether an emote gets used or not. Like all of my emotes have potential use cases. Like the sippy for the sippy breaks. Big brain for when I big brain. And then you can also squish it when I do something fucking stupid. Um, froggy for just when something is cursed. The ah, I feel like is self-explanatory. You have the the think, the heart, um, the, the sus, dorselessness. All of those have like very clear use cases. There are great clips, but are you going to use them? is the question and the feet i feel like the feet is self-explanatory <laughs> that was a terrible idea i was so mad when fucking like that was i think i don't think i was even the one that suggested it it was uh kirpe who put it in a a big sheet of potential emotes and i was like yeah all right okay yeah you guys like put the feet next to an emote so it looks like Lauren sticking his feet in the air. So why don't we actually do the, one of the things that we were here for? Let, let me see if I can find the SoundCloud. Here we go. Jim Sterling and Hello, Digital everybody. Homicide. Whoops. Hash it out. You guys ready to listen to this? This is, oh God. This is an hour and 40 minutes long. I should have, s I made a mistake. I should have made this the entire stream. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Why? I thought that it was 40 minutes. I forgot it was an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, okay. Guys, I'm going to make a proposal. Rather than listening to the interview, why don't we read the articles that Digital Homicide put out? A couple years ago. And then ne uh, oh, next stream, we have Mary coming on. Stream after that. What did I say I was going to do in the stream after that? I mentioned I was going to do something on Tuesday. 
Extra long stream? Even then, there's only an, an hour and a half left in stream and we're going to be pausing. Are you keeping a calendar? Are you trying to remember all of this? I'm trying to remember all of this and it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. I need to actually... Oh, right. It was going to be crypto. Tuesday was going to be crypto. Yeah, I need to keep a calendar. I, this is... No, I. this is ridiculous at this point. Yeah, we need to do a chick track stream. Uh, I'm going to take little notes here. Uh, crypto. We're going to have a stream just for the digital homicide interview. Um, okay. Just start a tangent in your next stream and check it out. <laughs> okay, we are still going to do digital homicide, but we are going to look specifically at the stuff they've posted. Here we go. Digital homicide uncensored. You guys ready? You guys ready for brain rot? So, their last post was on August 15th, 2020. And they just disappeared after that but they put up a bunch of articles trying to defend themselves let me see how far back they oh here we go great deal on counter-strike check out loot too and then you can see they wait hi kotaku here we go digital homicide uncensored on January 22nd, 2020, they posted this. Hopefully it's still up. Well, archive.org, here I come. There we go. Yeah, we've got this. It's got a bunch of backups. Don't worry, everyone. Don't worry. We've got it. Come on, baby. Hey, baby. What? What? But it was there for a minute. What? Let's go to the next one. To a later date. Here we go. Oh, it's been a while. Just getting started putting things together and wanted to let everyone know great stuff is on the way. A selection of old titles is now available for PC. Keep checking back as I will be updating with more games and finally talking about what happened in the past. Uh, so they're just trying to sell more games. Well, penis check first. Remember the football lady? Yeah, you're right. I, why did I call it a footballer's outfit? Uh, so I'm back. Why was, what is this? Why was Jim Sterling sued? All right. Archive.org. Oh my God, it's a fucking Twitter link. Eat asshole. Because they always put their own little thing on it to track what people click on. This is dead. Go to... Whoops. Go to... Wait, did I close it? Am I? Archive.org. Hold on a moment. Come on. Okay, I think we're good. I can be on this side now. Where? Here we go. 
Uh, thank God for archive.org, by the way. I might end up doing a charity stream to keep, like, to specifically for archive.org because the, the work that they do is so important. Like, that's my first thought is, um, like, this organization. Because I've, like, I've done so much, like, so much of my work has only been possible because of the things that they have saved and archived. What they do is so important. Like, incredibly important. There might be um, misgendered of non-binary finery. Yeah, um, possibly. We'll see. Uh, this might be before. When... When did Jim transition? When did that, like, when was that public? About a year ago? Yeah, this is before that. They still go by Jim, to my understanding. Because they're, they're James Stephanie Sterling. So why would, either way, it still should be okay. Uh, why was Jim Sterling sued? Well, there are many different matters. So this is brain rot. Oh, this was updated August 15th, 2020. No, 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 no. We want to go back to the original. And then we'll look at the update. Motherfucker. Here we go. Why was Jim Sterling sued? While there are many different matters regarding the reason my brother James sued Jim Sterling, I wanted to point out one easy to understand reason that was a focal point of the lawsuit that the media and everyone failed to even acknowledge. Definition of defamation via Google. Generally, defamation is a false and unprivileged statement of fact that is harmful to someone's reputation and published with fault, meaning as a result of negligence or malice. As can be seen in the excerpt. Wait, what? Where's the excerpt? It's, ah, uh, fucking link rot. He literally admits to the defamation? Mm, you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Someone pulling the X is defined as card. So th there are two ways that you should never start an essay. The first is Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines... And the other one is since the beginning of time. Never do either. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the card says moops. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I wish I could see what they were linking to. What is this? Does it actually go anywhere? Oops. So they're just, I, I seem to remember seeing this and the, the, the excerpt not even admitting defamation. I seem to remember that being the case. Even the obviously malice encrusted, you need a dash here, retraction still el elu eludes. I think they mean allude, like A-L-L-U-D-E. To elude is to try, is to um, sneak past or evade, still eludes to the idea that it could be stolen. Retractions don't nullify damages depending on state law. He was told on multiple occasions from me personally that we obtained our licenses via Shutterstock and never bothered to ask for comment, which proves negligence. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. There are countless examples that can be used to support malice. It's so simple it could be used as an example for defamation in legal studies. No one, to my knowledge, managed to put this into any of their articles or videos. Instead, it was falsely painted as a frivolous lawsuit designed to censor criticism. 
Now, there will probably be a lot of attempts at sidetracking from the point, but it's this straightforward. He falsely accused us of stealing someone's artwork to a large number of people, which is the literal legal definition of defamation. Think about your local news station, college newspaper, or some other form of media falsely accusing you of stealing something and it causing you tons of harassment, emotional duress, and damage to your professional career. Wouldn't you be upset? Wouldn't, like, this is Facebook-style posting. Wouldn't thousands of people bombarding you because of a false allegation affect your life? Well, there is more to it than just that, you might say. Isn't the more to it you would be referring to from the same sources that printed all of the false, misrepresented garbage thus far? If you're wondering why you've been misinformed, it's because of the media outlets that covered it, which is why these articles are being written, so be sure to subscribe and drop back by to read about what really went on and what's going on in the future. Wait, Sterling told me you're a liar. Yeah, believe this guy if you want. Uh, so obviously there are some chunks missing. I wonder if we go through if they actually got archived. Yeah, all of these need a meow meow purr. Hey! All right. It's also worth noting that Galactic Hitman's artwork has been taken from elsewhere, just like the initial art for the Slaughtering Grounds was. You can see the original imagery here, which Faker ECC may have purchased from Shutterstock. Does DH even have a single artist? The digital homicide. So, the problem here is that Jim Sterling very clearly is saying that they didn't make... Like, his point is that they're... Like, their point is that... Digital Homicide didn't make the art themselves. Not even steal. Like, they didn't say. They just said, it's been taken from elsewhere. Ah, I see. It said Digital Homicide just took the image from a DeviantArt artist without permission, not knowing it was also sold on Shutterstock. Okay, like, retractions like this are so normal in reporting. It never got archived because he fixed it. Uh, so, like, again, yeah, the original... Okay, the original comment was was wrong. All right. Like, th this is pretty normal for retractions and changes, though. Again, like, even so, this is still absurd. Then there's... I think there might still be missing stuff here. Yeah, being wrong isn't defamation. So defamation the the reason that defamation lawsuits are so difficult is because you have to prove malice most of the time and that is very difficult to do we need a t owl pat emote <laughs> we need to i i need to i would need to do a subathon to unlock that emote slot if we were to do that need to get enough subs once we unlock the emo oh yeah bttv we do need some bttv emotes don't we yeah you have to have known that it was wrong before you said or typed it and it's clear that you didn't know prove malice as well as that it's made up yeah there the the bar for malice is like quite high there's a reason that so many of these lawsuits settle or just never go to court even if it seems obvious. Thought it was only for uh, public persons. Yeah. Digital homicide is absolutely public. <clears throat> Throat. Yeah, who knows if they actually bought it. Um, did they say they bought it? We obtained our licenses via Shutterstock. Yeah, okay. They say they did. They say they did. They claim they did. <laughs> so obviously we have more. So why was Jim Sterling sued? Why was Digital Homicide's lawsuit thrown out of court? Oh, Bored Lizzie. Thank you so much for the five months of sub. And hey. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. Thank you very much.
Yeah, it's always high in the US because of the First Amendment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Kotaku. So we need to take this and stuff it into archive.org. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Digital Homicide versus Gilson B. Pontus. Oh my god, right, Gilson B. Pontus. This dude must have dirt on someone at Sony to keep getting their games uploaded to the PlayStation Store. Why was Digital Homicide's lawsuit thrown out of court? It wasn't. This article, Court Throws Out Digital Homicide's Case Against Critic Jim Sterling, for example, written by Cecilia da Anastasio and listed on Kotaku, uses a title that is not only false, but intentionally worded to support the biased, false premise contents of the article. First, Digital Homicide didn't sue anyone James reminded. By saying Digital Homicide, you're saying our company and myself were also litigants in the case filing, which isn't true. Second, the lawsuit wasn't thrown out, it was dismissed as part of a settlement. Ill detail these below. Saying thrown out is used to support the false claim that the lawsuit was frivolous, which I've already written an article about and it was not frivolous. Mentioning critic Jim Sterling once again is just meant to support the false premise of the article's content that the... There's so many typos that I'm like getting lost. Mentioning critic Jim Sterling once again is just meant to support the false premise of the article's content that the lawsuit is about silencing criticism so that readers will be outraged and want to support a crusade against a free speech violation. Now, this was a startling, startling sight for game critics. If taken seriously, digital homicides lawsuit could constitute a great threat, constitute a threat against critics who publish negative reviews on large platforms. It would be used as a precedent. This quote from their article once again paints the lawsuit as a frivolous lawsuit meant to harm reviewers' right... Re again, the apostrophes, guys. Right to free speech. Nowhere in the article do they mention the focal point of the lawsuit, a false accusation of theft done by Sterling. That a is that... Wait a minute, but that wasn't. That wasn't the crux of their lawsuit. And... What about their lawsuit, like, try, like, printing out all of these reviews on Steam? They're just not addressing them at all. There's so much that is left unaddressed. Because, they, remember, they, like, printed out a hundred negative reviews on Steam or something? Like, how many was it? They, they tried to sue a hundred individual people on Steam. This wasn't about your right to free speech, it was about your right to not have false information printed about you. Which is ironic since the article itself is an example of having false information printed about you. So what actually happened that lead up, that, yeah, that led up, I'm sorry, I'm like, they're, they're, they have so many typos that I'm not sure what's a typo immediately anymore. So what actually happened that led up to the dismissal? Let's start at the first mention of the case contents. I personally had a conversation with Sterling on the phone, which he later claimed was me threatening him to silence his criticism. This is false. I actually told him specifically I couldn't tell him what to do. All I wanted was for him to cover us like he would cover anyone else, instead of specifically targeting us and bombarding every single game we released, game we posted to Greenlight, or website update. I literally begged him to just be cool, my exact words, and was met with his normal arrogant contemptuousness. I told him I didn't want a legal fight even though he had already committed defamation and that it would just be a waste of money for both of us. Unable to stand any more of his awful rude behavior, I ended the phone call saying, see you in court. Who believes this? Who believes that this is how it went? <laughs> I decided against it and as usual just wanted to focus on making games. It's about the art. It's about the art, everyone. Hold on. It's... It's about...
It's about the art. It's it's about the art. It's about the art. It's about making games. It's about the art. They just wanted to focus on making games. That's what's really important. <laughs> You're looking at the digital homicide game as holes. Ah, uh, it's the craft, everyone. Eat asshole. <laughs> Fast forward through more nonstop coverage and false light articles. What? False light articles? My brother James was fed up with a constant defamation and sued Sterling. If you want to read about the focus point of the lawsuit, you can read an article about it here. To stay on point, let's delve into what transpired from the filing of the lawsuit. Sterling, upon being served the lawsuit, immediately contacted his, his insurance company. Since the defamation took place while conducting business, the insurance wouldn't cover it. So Sterling had to obtain a lawyer. Now the case itself took forever stretched out by Sterling, taking a long time to obtain a lawyer, the lawyer asking for a 30-day extension, and the fact that defamation cases are on a low tier of case priority, especially pro se. During the year or so of the case going on, my brother James had to endure all of the falsely painted articles and barrage of misinformed people hounding him. Feeling disheartened in the justice system alone and under duress, he chose to give in and agreed to settling the dispute. So, I went over this in my video, but the problem, the, the main problem, the, the main problem that they ran into was that they, like, they were trying to sue for damages to a company, ba but base, like, they, they were suing as a person for damages to a company. The company has to sue as an entity, but a company has to be represented by a uh, a bar-approved lawyer or a, a state-approved lawyer that has passed the bar, the bar exam. They didn't do that. <laughs> so they had, they, they couldn't keep going with the lawsuit. And yeah, like, Jim Sterling lawyered up very quickly. Sterling's lawyer, seeing my brother's willingness to settle, then demanded James R. to cover his legal expenses and some other ridiculous stipulations made by Sterling. He threatened to do all the lovely things lawyers do, like scouring your financial records, requ requiring psychological evaluation, and other things just to make you miserable. Those of you donating to Sterling's Patreon, I'm sure he appreciates your contributions directly or indirectly paying for this. Actually, yeah. <laughs> if this was true, yeah. He also threatened to add me to the lawsuit if my brother didn't comply. What he wasn't aware of, like, again, like, threatening to add him to the lawsuit because they're trying to... Oh. Because they're trying to sue for damages to a company. They're trying... So... Ugh. It's not dragging him into the lawsuit. It's just saying you have to sue, like, as a company. Curry Murmurs has been subbed for six months now. Thank you so much. And they say it's about family. It's about getting your family into the bonus bean room. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not involved, I'm just involved, Sippy. <laughs> 
Yeah. He also threatened, let's see, uh, what he wasn't aware of was I was standing there during the threat and all of a sudden he was now on the phone with the person he was threatening. After explaining to him that Sterling's defense of hyperbole was complete trash, that he had made false statements of fact and I would be obtaining a lawyer the following day if they didn't settle with my brother, oh, how the mood changed. I doubt it. Sterling even paid for his lawyer to draft up a contract at James Ramin's request because he now saw he needed to get out of a losing case any way he could. Not liking the wording of the contract, my brother decided not to sign it anyhow, and they ended up settling the dispute with Sterling right fully, so eating the lawyer cost. If the case was so rock solid, why didn't you pursue it, you might ask? Have you ever been lied about and painted as a tyrant against free speech, then bombarded by tens of thousands of people? It's not fun. Honestly, my brother was just exhausted from everything that happened and steam had just obliterated our business. I look back now and wish I had used the savings I had to get him or us a lawyer. Sorry, bro. <laughs> The fact he stood up for so long against such terrible misrepresentations of the truth is admirable. This wasn't a case of a critic defending his free speech, this was a case of someone getting away with defamation and an example of how irresponsible media outlets can interfere to such a degree that justice becomes unobtainable. Ah, uh, The funny thing is how many details they're leaving out, like how he how he signed a contract and then like but but didn't say that he made changes to the contract and then sent it back over yeah okay so for those of you who don't know jim sterling claims that his lawyer draft or their lawyer drafted up a contract sent it over to uh who was it uh J james yeah james James altered the contract, signed it, then sent it back without saying that he had altered it. That's illegal. <laughs> Oops. Whoopsie daisy, just kind of forgot to say that. These people are shitheads. Fuck both of them. They're so childish. <laughs> it's so cringy. Was that it? Thrown out of court. How to get a cash grab on Steam directly. Now, what is this? Let me let me do a penis check. This video isn't available anymore. Cock blocked. Then, yeah, Valve Review's own product uses deceptive tactics. Okay. This is going to tell me that I can't get to the website. Here we go. Get that into archive.org. <laughs> penis check it's it kind of has become parlance for like when i'm checking a website to make sure that nothing is a tos violation um that be, because mike and i were looking over um what was uh um small brain hours we were looking at it at uh it's not man after ma'am it's uh, All Tomorrows. That's what it was. There are so many of these books with very similar titles. Yeah, we're looking at All Tomorrows. And some of them ha have PP and Bala. And Booba. So we had to be careful. Valve Review's own product uses deceptive tactics. So when seeing the title, you are probably wondering, what in the hell? It's alright, it'll explain, and it's really straightforward. It's a pretty prime example of the hypocrisy in the industry, so juicy you can scoop it with a ladle. It's also one of many articles that it'll be writing, pointing out the lack oversight on a company that has been making up their own rules for years. 
They dish out financial damage to developers and create labels for said developers that would describe their own actions. Let's get some background knocked out first. Seam has quite a few times in the past removed developers for review manipulation. You can read about an example here where a studio asked its employees to write reviews for the game they worked on. True. Steam then proceeded to remove their portfolio from Steam for review manipulation. There are quite a few examples out there. If you browse around, it's not hard to find some more. It's not... P Mike has borrowed penis check as a meme about chat stealing his dick? What? Sorry, for <laughs> Ika Pika, it's fine. I shouldn't have put it on stream. That that's that 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 is me. That I should have I should have been more careful about that. It's probably fine. Uh oddly there are groups that have been dedicated to finding this type of material, but no one has ever aimed their spotlight at the people who are supposed to be setting the example for everyone else. Steam itself has addressed the topic of reviews in the past. They like to use words that create a picture for their audience like that of a developer using deceptive tactics. But the review score has also become a point of fixation for many developers to the point where some developers are willing to employ deceptive tactics to generate a more positive review score. They have made their stance clear that they will stand up against these developers and their deceptive tactics like a holy knight on a crusade to rid the world of evildoers. They say they will accomplish this by ending business relationships with developers who have reviews linked to the developer's account. Um, then they say, but in many cases, the abuse is clear and obvious, such as duplicated and or generated reviews in large batches, or reviews from accounts linked to the developer. In those cases, we've now taken action by banning the false reviews and will be ending business relationships with developers that continue violating our rules. Reasonable. Now the question I've put out there is, is what if Valve reviews its own games? If they did, then wouldn't they be obligated to remove said games from Steam for using deceptive tactics or face antitrust slash unfair competition repercussions? While it might have the similar results, it, while it might have the similar results if it was one company doing this to another, it's much worse with massive legal fines if a monopoly is doing this to another company slash companies while giving themselves another's preferential treatment. Well, this see- okay, there's just the gap. Well, this seems far-fetched. Where's your proof that they've left reviews on their own games? Uh... Visit valvesoftware.com slash people. Scroll down and click on Al Alden Kroll. Textures up on the right side. This is view Steam profile. So, Portal 2 review left by Alden Kroll. What? So, he just reviewed... Oh, so it's like they've worked on the game and they're like... that. They're just adding... Okay... I worked on this game and it is awesome. <laughs> I feel like that's that that's a little cuter cuz like these are games with so many thousands of reviews this isn't a drop in the bucket. It just doesn't it doesn't this this is such an innocuous version of it. He clearly just closed that he worked on it. Yeah. <laughs> I make down the rabbit hole and it's good and you should watch it. <laughs> How dare you leave comments on your own videos. The list could go on. You'll notice the review dates on the Portal 2 reviews are close to the launch date of Portal 2, so it's kind of obvious the intention of the reviews. It's like, technically? But again, these are games that are going to have way, way more reviews than digital homicide games. And these smaller games. Now most, like, they're, they're not going to be, like, they're going to be a drop in the bucket. Uh, Portal 2 reviews are close to the launch date of Portal 2, so it's kind of obvious the intention of their reviews. Now, I think they're just having a, a laugh. Now, most of these have been set to hidden or friends only so they can't be seen, which is obvious why Wayback Engine had to be used. Why would they be hidden? The reason should be obvious. 
This isn't to say they, these are the only Valve employees and the only game they have done this on. It isn't. This is just one specific example, and I'm sure if you give it a shot on way back, you'll be able to find more. Lots of big companies have done similar, it's easy to spot. For example, a game launching and all of a sudden 10 of the 20 first reviews are all from accounts in the same city the game was developed. I'm thinking of someone specific, but that is a separate article for the future. Really, it all boils down to people's right to do business, fair playing field, and customers not being misled. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. What? Personally, I think it looks like an example of a bad actor using deceptive tactics. It will be interesting to see how it's spun and who supports a fair market and customers' rights or who leaps to the defense of, mon of a monopoly on the loose. You could have read this before everyone else is a member of my Patreon and picked up some free games. Check out my Patreon today. You You- You got- You guys want to check out the Patreon? You, you guys want to look? You want to? You want to look? You want? You want to look? You want to look? Oh, I want to look. Oh, please, please tell me they're still up. No. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see if I can find a link. Free games. Uh, I don't want to click on any of their links. I'm like afraid to. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. What if I search Patreon itself? Patreon.com Digital homicide. Nope. No Patreon. What if we go to the Wayback Machine? Uh, follow on Twitter, follow on Facebook. Uh, they don't even have a link to the Patreon. Oh, and then they also had an article that they didn't post to their Twitter, I think called what the fuck is an asset flip maybe you know what everyone we're again 10 minutes overdue for a sippy break we're going to look at this article let's see if the article is even there here all of you get to wait with bated breath with me Free games are not free if they are dog shit and waste the limited time you have on this in this mortal coil. Yeah, <laughs> you're paying with time. Please, I, I want to see this article. No sip, only kringe. <laughs> it exists. It's here. Oh boy. All right, everyone, we're going to read that article in just a minute. But first, it's very important. I want all of you to stand up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, get yourself a sippy. And I'll see you all in about five minutes. I myself am going to refresh my teacup.
Hello. Hello, everyone. I am back. <laughs> I have made myself another cup of tea. What what is everyone sipping right now? Uh oh. Wait, someone said, hello, Fred mom. Is my mom in the chat? I should, okay. I. <laughs> oh, I am being Fred mom. I see. I need to, um, next time she shows up in chat, I need to VIP her to make it more obvious. I had a, a very cute experience. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm the owl mom. <laughs> my mom texted me the other day. So um, I got my brother and his wife ring fit adventure for Christmas. And my mom finally tried it out. They, they set my mom up with it uh, to try it out. And she texted me and was like, ring fit was so much fun. Like, <laughs> it was so sweet. She was she was very excited about it. It's it's cute. I think that I think she's going to do it at least a little bit more. It's very wholesome. Yeah. She's like it like the the game helped sort of keep my mind off the fact that I'm doing work. <laughs> it is it's surprisingly fun and and will kick your ass if you let it. It's good. It's great. Really good way to just make sure you move during the day. But yeah, my, my brother, uh, Corey, and his wife, Elise, are both um, enjoying Ring Fit as well. <laughs> I personally am looking forward to playing it a little bit today and, um, and reading. I'm looking forward to reading today uh, before I get to work. That's what I'm going to be doing. Before I like before I work, I have I have like a whole list of things I do to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. And one of my self care things is reading every day. Because reading is a it's it's almost a sacred activity for me. And for a while, that sacredness kind of it made it hard to read because I wanted the circumstances to be just right. But. Uh, but now I just make sure to read a little bit every day, and it helps a lot. Reading, what a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I read so you don't have to. Hmm. Hey, we have one more Digital Homicide article to read, and I'm scared. WTF, WTF is an asset flip. We are going to hear about asset flipping from the men themselves. This is the one where they're very mad at Total Biscuit. What? And not at James Stephanie Sterling? Well, this nonsense idea started as a way to insult developers who didn't create their own models or art assets. When it first came about, it invoked the idea that the developer, developer put no work into their game and just spent five minutes loading together some assets someone else made. Easy peasy. It then pro Like, they write like boomer moms. It then progressed into a new idea of, well, it's if they use a complete project, which is basically just a pre-created game template. Finally, it just isn't even a term really used much anymore because the premise of the idea is R-worded. Doesn't matter, it caused developers' reputation damage or prevented some people from even trying to pursue their dreams of making games. The idea created something to complain about which led to views on YouTube videos and ad revenue. 
let's talk about how every industry uses assets and reuses them. Major game publishers reuse game templates with such minimal new content, they could have just released a free update but figured they'd charge a new $59.99 price tag for it instead. Television and movies use and reuse sets. Haven't you ever watched a show and been like that pool scene was in that other show I watched? Heard new songs that sound familiar? Ever listened to a cover band? Yeah, they do it also. <laughs> Manufacturing plants completely re-scrap their assembly lines after every run, or do they modify and reuse components? This is so embarrassing to read. It's like, you know what I think part of the problem is? The, and I think that this explains some of their games as well. The Remind Brothers are incapable of understanding nuance at all. They don't understand, they, they see the world in completely black and white terms. It is. It's child logic. And there are a lot of things that make the Remind Brothers feel like children. And that's why everyone was so surprised when they learned that the Remind Brothers were as old as they are. Uh, I, I Like, one of them has kids. They're around the same age, I think. But... They like this is part of the reason nothing they do has any nuance to it. Their games are very one dimensional. Um, I mean, fucking. Come on. Of course, you're going to assume that they're rather young. And this is one of the reasons. It's because they are so... I'm just reiterating what I'm saying over and over. I'm just going to say the same thing in different words if I keep going. But you all get the idea. How old are they? They're adults, at the very least. As a connoisseur of toilet humor, I find that game offensive and shallow. <laughs> I feel like it's the kind of game that even people who like that kind of humor are not going to like. Uh, heard, uh, man, uh, why has no one ever talked about the tons of developers and publishers that have been pouring reskin games onto Steam for years? They have. <laughs> Let's talk about Big Fish. Now I know there are fans of hidden object games and there is an audience for the genre. Yet does Steam really need 400 plus under several aliases from the same company? When the Sterling crowd was dancing around their fires shaking their digital pitchforks in my direction, Big Fish was releasing 8 to 15 hidden object games a month. Now I know some people enjoy them, my point is everyone was complaining about too many games and reskins on Steam, but no one talked about a publisher that didn't even have to go through green light dumping tons of games on the platform. But didn't they? Like, people were talking about how this was a really big problem. That's why the term asset flip became a thing, because they needed a term, they couldn't just say digital homiciding it, because so many other people were doing it. Oh hey Mike! I'm, <laughs> Mike is taking his revenge by immediately shoving fate into my chat. This is vengeance. I, I this is vengeance for the time when I told everyone to go to Mike's channel and use the feet emote. I deserve this. How you doing, Mike? Something I wanted to mention, by the way, is if I do a uh, a subathon. I think I want it to be with digital homicide games because I have. Uh, Vex helped me sort my Steam library the other night. I have 20 digital homicide games. I have 20. <laughs> I could easily make that into a subathon. Like, if we hit this many subs this this fast, then we'll do like we'll take another we'll we'll do another digital homicide game for another 30 minutes, right? 
<laughs> or something to that effect. Maybe we just play a maybe we just do a really long stream and play a bunch of digital homicide games. Fred, that's a problem. Okay, let me explain. The reason why I have 20 digital homicide games isn't because I bought them. I bought one. When Steam kicked Digital Homicide off of the platform, they also gave a bunch of Digital Homicide games to anyone who had a, a Digital Homicide game. I think they might have just given the entire Steam catalog. So I just have all, like 20 Digital Homicide games. Like, just one day, they appeared in my library. Mysteriously. I can only assume that that's what happened, because this was after they got kicked off of Steam. Uh, whoops, all digital homicide games. Guys, can someone explain to me how subathons work? Like, what's the idea behind them? How do, like, what is, what is the mechanism? Do you say like, oh, if I get this, like, if if you sub, I stream for this much longer? Or do you just do a long stream and be like, give subs? Every sub or donation adds time to the timer. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Sleep on stream and make money. <laughs> hmm. You break their minds, they give you money. You break their minds again. Repeat until satisfied. This world is crazy. <laughs> Other times it's daily streams with no days off until you reach your goal. Gotcha. Okay, huh. I feel like the latter could get really bad. But the idea of having, like, every sub increasing the timer by a certain amount sounds like a, like to a maximum. To a maximum sounds like fun. The 8-bit drummer did a reverse subathon for April Fools. Every sub took 10 seconds off the timer. <laughs> hey, Bored Lizzie, thank you for gifting out a sub. It looks like you get to visit the bonus beam room. Thank you so much. Yeah, Ask Limes. I'll I'll figure out something that works for me if I do want to do one because I would really like a like Lauren pet emote, like an official one. I'd like to unlock a couple more sub slots. Uh, didn't didn't Digital Homicide have a weird Steam trading card racket? Kind of. The idea was you could leave the game on and then just farm um, farm cards and then sell them on the market. Yeah, that's why some people were doing it. You could look at the reviews uh, and it would explain. Hey, Lucky Bun, how you doing? Uh, let's see. The, their website literally boasts a new game every day. I'm sure it's a completely fresh game created from scratch 100%. Let's look at a few on Steam and see. It took a bit. Because there are so many sub companies and curators associated to Big Fish, it's hard to sort things out to quote Tom G.A. Valve Rep. It shouldn't be a shell game. Big Fish, shell game, haha, <laughs> get it. Here's one link to some of their stuff. Shows 381 titles or something. Let's look at one of their series, like Never Tales Collection. Shows four games in one series. All what looks like using same game template. They just use different art and different sequences from the same template. The, the, the way they write also makes them feel like children. Uh, none of them with 10 plus reviews in their four years of release. All of them along with most of Big Fish and Associates pro products priced at 10 to $15 per game. Now I've seen some pretty unsuccessful indie games, but even they can scrap together 10 plus reviews in four years. Think the reason is Big Fish games don't go on sale very often on Steam. So how do they make money? Well, they just bundle with sites like Fanatical for 98% off like these similar games. You wouldn't think this business practice would bother Steam since it's not offering a fair deal to Steam customers, but Big Fish and others have been doing it for years. See, Steam doesn't want low prices on their store. They have made dozens of changes to ensure that you as a developer can't price your game or your bundles at the price that you would be competitive at and offer great prices to customers at the same time. This is so annoying when they keep saying that they're doing this for like cus like for the good of customers. It's like, motherfucker, have you looked at your game? 
Oh, you probably say you can't make any money selling games for 5 to 25 cents a piece, but games like Temper Tantrum released at 25 cents before they changed the rules and made $8,000 in its launch month. For a starving indie, I'd say that's a pretty good launch. It's brilliant, really. Steam's manipulation of the market and no one the wiser. They control the minimum price you can sell a title for and control your access to Steam keys. So what ends up happening? Well, if you can't get Steam keys, then publishers like Big Fish and others with full access to Steam keys and can undercut your prices externally. See, Steam controls not just prices, but who succeeds? Strawberry and Gore succeeds by subbing for three months. They... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. Your streams are perfect for those long stretches of work. Keep up the good work, Mr. Gargantuan Testes. Ah, thank you. Oh, hype train. Hype train. Hype train. <gasps> hype train. You know what that means. It means... Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Okay. It means... <gasps> uh, God damn it. No, stop. Choo-choo. <laughs> God damn it. Immersion ruined. Ah, who needs immersion? Immersion is fake anyway. Well, Steam... All right. Let's, let, let's keep going. Well, Steam can't sell games that cheap, they wouldn't make any money. Actually, they already do right since they allow external bundles to price that low by routinely providing Steam keys to developers that bundle over and over. They allow companies like Big Fish and others to bundle externally that cheap for years. Oh my god, all of you. J Gypsy is the person that kicked the train out the door. Thank you so much for gifting it out a song. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. And oh my god, oh no, oh oh god, oh god. <laughs> plico, plico, the hundred bits for hat. Yeah. I am the con captain, cr conductor, engine, train engineer, operator. I'm a fucking owl, what do you want? Star shard with a hundred bits to say round two. Fight. <laughs> Thank you so much, both of you. Lost in Bokeh gifted out five subs. Guys, the subathon hasn't started yet. <laughs> oh my gosh, all of you. Congratulations if you managed to nab one of those gift subs. Then Sir Zer gave out a community sub. Grizzly Boar gifted another five subs. Congrats to all of you who managed to grab all the Prinny Punisher 69. Oh dear. Muso Cat gifted out a sub too. Oh, they're paying forward the gift they got from Frun Maximus. That Frun Maximus's <laughs> legacy lives on. And Pate B gifted a sub to Governor Explosion. About time. <gasps> Limes! Hey there! Excuse me, streamer, when is your Snape Snogger video coming out? <laughs> Oh no, don't remind me. Don't remind me. Hi Limes, how are you doing? Oh, I really need to get a bot going so I can shill for the people. Like for for the friendos that come in. Like Mike. Mike was here earlier too. Do I have you VIP'd? Let me VIP you. If I don't. If I don't, that would be weird. I don't exactly have a lot. Bot win. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to get it set up. Oh, you are VIP'd. Okay, good. And Mike is VIP'd. Bot it. My mods. My mods are demanding bots. They need it. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll check him. Um, Vex has done a lot of modding. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to chat with them about it. They're just... They're very helpful. <laughs> Plug me into the matrix. Okay. If you want. <laughs> Limes is very important. Yes. You're welcome. No. Lost in Bokeh just gave a thousand bits. What did you say? Biscuits. 
I almost want to like the the beans are important. I want I want to keep the beans, but I also want biscuits. You want a biscuit? Where'd it go? Where'd the thousand bits go? You guys are burying me. <laughs> One hundred for hat, and then it should be after that. Uh, I am small brain. Where the fuck? What is wrong with me? I'm not even seeing the Moobot. Moobot takes like 0.2 seconds to set up. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do Nightbot or Moobot. Flying visit, I have to disappear. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Limes. It's always nice for whenever my friends stop by and stream. However long you can stay. <laughs> people are wanting another stream like that i was saying like maybe we should do another uh co-op stream at some point it'd be really fun to gather people together for it there are some other games that are maybe more accessible than <laughs> than pulsar maybe something like alien swarm would be fun because alien swarm is one of those games where just things infinitely go wrong Yeah, Lost in Bokeh, I can't find your goddamn bits. No, I'm going to find this. I swear to God I'm going to find this. Scroll up slowly. Okay, so it's... Okay, official... It's before the gift sub that official pig wrestler gave out. Thank you very much for the gift sub, official pig wrestler. Who got that one? Emmykins, congrats. Enjoy your owls. There it is. Lost in Bokeh gave a thousand bits to say, Oh, Captain, my Captain. Found it. Thank you so much for the thousand bits. That's a lot. And the gift subs, too. The, the, all the gift subs. Thank you so much, all of you. And, I mean, you have to know what's coming, right? Begin. It looks like it's 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 like where it's the bonus biscuit room. That was a leg. That stream was legendary. Fucking like limes coming up. It's like, I left the data in your locker. Your head looks like a donut. And then just fucking walks away. <laughs> Wait, Naxary, can you not set up polls? Can you not? You should be able to just do slash poll. And that will allow you to do it. If you're a mod, you should be able to. I should take a clip of Lime saying, Do you want a biscuit? I should. I absolutely should. Lime's is an agent of chaos. No, 100%. God, you guys just absolutely blasted that hype train to level 5. Like, no, like, immediately. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your emotes. There are actually some decent um, hype train emotes. And ran the fool with 200 bits. Just to, aw, just to give a tea owl heart. Thank you. Goes to the territory of being a vine sauce streamer. Yeah, that's fair. Limes is like hidden chaotic. It, you never know when, like, when the limes gremlin is going to appear. Goodbye, hat. Hype train done. <laughs> I love that hat that Vex made for me. Made for all of us. Vex made an individual hat for each member of the crew for that stream. Did we finish My Immortal? Yeah, we're done with My Immortal. We need to finish up this article and then we need to get to art. 
Uh, let's see. Steam currently will ship any game for free with unlimited downloads, so you can't say it's bandwidth. Well, what about transaction fees that would kill them if you only charged uh, five cents for a game? Nope. Any game under forty-nine cents must be much be must be purchased via Steam wallet. Problem solved. There's really no reason a game on Steam can't be sold for whatever price you want, even a penny. Except maybe Steam wants to make sure you're paying top dollar when you're shopping on their storefront. If you want a deal, you'll have to go out the back of the store to the vendors selling out of their trunks. There also is no reason the lowest price for a game on Steam is $9.99 always, but it's bundled externally for $0.10 cents routinely. Doesn't it make you wonder why? Maybe it's a... a loophole. I mean, as a monopoly, shouldn't they be required to distribute games at all price points? But they're not. A monopoly. They have a very large share of the digital marketplace, but it's not a monop. I wouldn't say it's a monopoly. It's not quite there. Anyway, I I look. I'm trying to engage with digital homicide logically, and it's not working. <laughs> That's a take. Joel shat himself. Joel got mod status and then posted a Mogus cock ASCII in Mike's chat, and because he was a mod, it couldn't be deleted, then he left. <laughs> what the fuck? Jesus Christ. I'm glad that everyone here is so well behaved. Ah. Her husband, uh, yeah, Joel, there's a part of me that wonders, Joel might complain about the meme. Does Joel complain about the memes? Because, I mean, he's the who has been drawing dicks guy and the, um, the grand dad, but he leans into the memes so hard. He loves them, but yells at them. Yeah, <laughs> At any given moment, he is in a quantum state of loving the memes and hating the memes. He only hates the granddad and Bonzi buddy ones. Okay. As one of Mike's mods, Joel has been a little terror. <laughs> yeah. That. <laughs> Joel's a little shit. He just kind of does his thing. He's Swedish. There's no logic. You know... I'm beginning to wonder because Swedish people like Swedish people and just people from that region of the world all seem to just be a little bit fucking insane. Like does anyone else remember? Hold on. Certainly all of you remember this. We watched it on stream the other day. Jesse, Hold on. This. Jesse, Jesse, you brought an RV with the wrong ingredient. Jesse, I have no money for fucking bills and steep cells. Sorry, Mr. Shut White. Shut up, Jesse. But Mr. I'm high XDDDs at ass. What the fuck, Jesse? Mr. White, let's fuck hookers. All these spoonful. <laughs> Jesse, where did you put the methy? Sorry, Mr. White. Jesse, where's the cocaine <laughs> In my nose, Mr. Witter. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Witte, I require Matthew. Okay, Gustavo Fink. Please, man, wait. Just the crumby of cookie. Jesse, we need to cock Matthew for Gustavo Frank. Very important. Now go. Mr. What? We don't have methamphetamine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. What? Where is my sweet <laughs> <laughs> Where is my mothy, Mr. White? We don't have it, Mr. Bruce. <laughs> you steam account, Mr. White. <laughs> and then, of course, hold on. Did I? No, I didn't. Why didn't I bookmark it? Why am I like this? Hold on. If I just search this, will I be able to find it? Yeah, here we go. Greetings. Greetings. Fellow Americans. 
Oh, wait a minute. I can fix this. Um, I can just put a V, I think, in the... There we go. Greetings, fellow Americans. Do you know how hard it is to grab a cup of coffee with the same hand <laughs> that you're holding your bread? There it is. <laughs> yes, don't worry, I know bottom gear. <laughs> With the same hand that you are holding your bread. There it is. <laughs> yeah, he already has the coffee. What and he's picking up the bread, but he's like, Do you know how hard it is to grab I, I think I, it, it's like English is his second language. And so it just makes it funnier. His his wheeze. Yeah, his wheeze laugh is so good. Oh, Ran the Fool. Thank you for the 200 bits. So I wanted to talk to you all about something. I had a moment where I was trying to figure out if I wanted to have sound clips that people could use bits to play on stream. It would certainly encourage people to give more bits, but at the same time, I think it might also mess with the vibe of the stream. Because people would just be playing random sounds constantly, and this is not a random sound kind of stream. So I, I, I left it I left it on the table. It's a little bit too chaotic of an energy for the stream, I think. It would be an experiment for sure. It's it's a bit much. Add long cooldowns. Even then. Bits for random sounds, things is awful. Yeah, see, it, it just it doesn't fit the stream. It works for other people, but it just doesn't work for this stream. For gaming streams. Even then, like, what games am I going to play? I'm going to be playing games that need focus. I'm not smart enough to handle all of that. <laughs> Have to be quiet and short, yeah. Mention tits on stream. That might be fun to do for, like, select streams. Like, if I'm doing something really chaotic. Maybe I turn on the random sounds for, like, the subathon, but even then... Ridiculous amount. Hmm... Yeah, something like tits would be good. Twitch integrated throwing system. Chaos should come from Fred, not chat. Yeah, it's these streams are a little bit more curated, I think, than a lot of other streams. Well, I think... I think that we're going to call it. Oh, It's a Mystery just said, made a Twitch account to say I like it quiet. That's what I figured. I, I figured, I, I knew that it would encourage a lot more bits, but I'm not willing to sacrifice the, the vibe of the stream because I feel like this is a really special vibe. And, and I'd like to keep it. I'd rather, I would rather keep the vibe and work within the way the stream is because I think that it's special and it's a little rare. It's a little rare on Twitch. Tits winds up not being too distracting in my experience. I literally watched a stream of yours. I was lurking where people were just constantly throwing like Berliners at your face and you were just laughing uncontrollably. Don't you give me that shit, lucky bun. <laughs> Oh, Plico Plico, the 100 bits to say encourage a lot more of these. Yeah, see, <laughs> this I guess this is the advantage of, um, of making things that are a little bit, that, that people want but are a bit offbeat. Because I already, like, I'm at the point where I'm comfortable. I don't, I don't need to do these things to encourage more support people are already like so supportive and like and i think it's because they like the vibe of the stream a lot of the time if you turn the meme bit redemptions on for infrequent game streams yeah but i don't do a lot of game streams like 
I guess the problem is I the th this is something I've gone back and forth on because I know like I know that game streams aren't really what people come to my stream for, right? But there are some things that I think would be really fun. Like, but a lot of the games that I would want to play on stream have a little bit of a barrier to entry, a knowledge barrier. Like chess, or Total Warhammer, or Stellaris. They're just, they don't quite work. They're very niche. Again, like, I'm four months in and I'm still, like, I've got a solid idea of what the baseline for my stream is. And I want to, like, and I want to experiment. I I get the feeling that there are certain games that would work on stream. I just don't know which ones. Something slow-paced, a lot of downtime. Yeah? Something that I could interrupt easily. How can chess have a learning curve? Some of us have been playing it since you have been making pee-pee in your pampers. <laughs> oh, you guys want the, the link to the video of the dude with the coffee and bread? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Go for it. <laughs> that which faith demands was cool. Experiment with reckless abandon. Look, look, hey Paradox, if you're listening, if you're listening, you want to do a little itty bitty sponsored stream, maybe we could work something out. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I actually legitimately talk to DJ about that because they have a really, um, they have a really cool looking expansion coming out, uh, DLC. I mean, I like all of it. I'm I love Stellaris so much. I think I have more hours in Stellaris than literally any other game I've ever played. Yeah, think so. Play Paradox games modded to their breaking point. Channel point redemption. Add a mod of your choice. <laughs> oh, that would be so chaotic. Oh, we could like. Uh, I've been feeling Mountain Blade Warband. You guys remember that old game? God. What do I have in the trash folder? Oh my god. I've got some trash. Thank you for recommending the cucumber and tomato herbal tea. Oh, was that like the Market Fresh Fruit Melange? Smells exactly like Airheads. I think, yeah, I think you're talking about the Market Fresh Fruit Melange. <laughs> yeah, I, yep, when you said it smells like Airheads, I'm like, yep, it's gotta be. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Is Bannerlord good? I actually haven't looked into Bannerlord. No, I totally would partner with Paradox, because I, I love Paradox games. Yeah, I know that it needed some, like, the beta was pretty broken and needed patches, but it's good now? Awesome. Okay. Yeah, it was absolutely, I, re I remember it was absolutely broken at launch, but maybe we play it. Man, that might be cool. Again, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna talk to my contacts at, um, at Paradox and see if I can do some sponsored stuff. That'd be cool. Well, hey everyone, we're approaching that time. We've covered everything that we wanted to. I'm I'm so mad that we didn't get to listen to the whole interview between um between Jim Sterling and um and Digital Homicide. So here's the problem, by the way, with games with stories. When people come in part way, they don't know what's going on in the story, they get confused and it's uncomfortable. So I'd want to play a game that doesn't have too much, like, too strong of a story. But hey, we're not done with stream because we need to look at art. Because we do have art. Let me poke around. For some reason, the, like, there's so much, like, Twitter is so busted. But the Boru is, like, even more busted. <laughs> Alright, let's scroll. 
Oh my god, I have to scroll down. There has to be a better way. Maybe I have, maybe, you know, okay. Guys, what if we had a hashtag? I think that might make things easier. The problem is, like, not everyone is going to get the message. Maybe, but maybe we can start using a hashtag. I'll, I'll keep looking in my mentions to make sure, but I'll just keep reiterating, hey guys, let's, let's use the hashtag. Let's poke around. I was thinking T-Owl art. Hmm. I'm not using hashtag fat nuts, Confucius Rex. <laughs> Sunless Sea might be cool. Yeah. T Owl art might be good. Let's see if let's see if it's being used. Hashtag T Owl art. Nothing. Completely unused. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So, not today, but from now, I'll make a tweet about it as well. Uh, from now going forward, let's use the hashtag TLart. I'm not using hashtag FatNuts or hashtag FatNutsFred or hashtag OwlNuts or hashtag Lauren's Feet. No. You're all the... have the worst chat. <laughs> Let's look up hashtag fat nuts and there's porn. Yeah, that's not surprising. I still remember that that the fucking hangers on that one like giraffe human. So this is good. We have some art from uh Phoenix Donnelly. This is good. Yeah, this is this is good. We have man extinguished <laughs> from the last stream. Absolutely excellent. Thank you Phoenix Donnelly. Quality. And I'll 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 be retweeting all of this so you all will be able to see it one way or the other on um, on my Twitter, on the Lauren on the Lauren Owl Friend Twitter. This is absolutely precious. Look at look at this piece that Mintelect made. Look at it's so soft. It's Lori Chan hugging Lauren. Oh, the fluff. Look at the f oh, it's so comfy. And the aftermath, the consequence, just absolutely covered in fluff. <laughs> <laughs> gonna need to take a lint roller oh this is this is too cute oh i really really ought to make a lauren plush at some point somehow set that up maybe i can find someone to do a limited run thank you so much mintelect it's so cute we scroll up and we have another piece from Mintelect that is also very precious. L <laughs> I I love this design of of Lori Cham. It feels right. It fe it it suits it suits Lauren's mood very well. I think also the fucking teacup. Meow, meow, her. <laughs> Oh, in the little Lord in the corner. Oh, this is so good. Mintelect. I love it. And the jacket. I own a jacket a lot like that, actually. Um. Okay. I need to explain something. I sent a photo of myself in a new jacket. This was years ago. Um, I got my orange jacket. And it, it comes over... Like, I really like jackets that come over my hands a little bit. I send it to him, and he looks at it and immediately freaks out. I'm like, 
what why why are you freaking out and he says it's a sea salt jacket i'm like what do you mean what's sea salt apparently there is a furry character that is like a a furry porn artist uses um See, like, use it has a character named Sea Salt who always wears jackets like the one that I got. And <laughs> that come over the hands. So it's my Sea Salt, ja like, <laughs> it's my Sea Salt jacket now. <laughs> oh, I'm going, like, it, it's, it's the. I'm going down a dark path and I hope no big dick werewolves attack me while I'm going down this path in the forest. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I have I have a sea salt jacket. That I, that is very close to my sea salt jacket. <laughs> Thank you, intellect. This is very cute. We have up, 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 up. Starry Feathers did something very important. Lauren is now a Sonic character. Uh, we haven't done the Ken Penders stream. That is coming up. Um, I'm going to schedule, schedule it with Vex. But we have a... what What is it called? A Mobian. They're a Mobian. So they have the, the feather horns, give a great silhouette, fantastic job, Kirpe. Right? Yeah, we um we had a couple of different potential designs, but the little uh e the little tufts on the head were just way too good. Uh no noodle legs, only thick. Thick. Modest fluff. Uh TOS friendly nudity. Yeah. Very important. The fly type Mobian. Yeah, there are a, there are a few of them. You can see like, I'm very impressed, Starry Feathers, at how well you you kept to the design rules of the Mobians. I didn't even know the name until you until like you made this. Like your your dedication to making this like just right is, and following the design rules is actually awesome. <laughs> they have a rule against male Mobians wearing pants. I mean, I have a rule against myself wearing pants. Haha, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I love th this is fantastic. And then, yeah, bonus points for guessing the inspiration for these boots. Hey, Ika Pika. <laughs> you are in turn having an influence on other people's fan art. <laughs> This is awesome, though. Thank you so much, Starry Feathers. Let me scroll up. So this is this is something that um, I, I pre-watched this to make sure. But Shala had a little message for everyone. We'll we'll pause the music real quick. Crank it. Bonk. Hi, Fred and Chat. Oh, whoop. I, I totally forgot to change it. Here we go. Hi, Fred and Chat. I'd like to personally thank Fred, Bex, and uh, especially Tina because they've uh, they've really helped my confidence in uh, these past uh, two weeks. And um, because of that, I'm able to VTube now. And uh, I don't mean for this to be a, a plug or anything, but I really want to uh, thank you guys for helping me out here. Um, I mean, even if it's just being there for, like, social reassurance. I, I won't say friendship, because, uh, you know, you guys don't know me that well, um, and that's fair enough. But, uh, yeah, thank you uh, very much for your for your support. And, um, I'd like to say, uh, uh, you're kind of like a, uh, uh, streamer family to me, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you very much, and um, I hope to make some more art. Uh, my animations are a bit slow because of the tediousness. It's but, fair. Yeah, um, I thought I'd put out this video uh, just as a thank you to all you guys because, <laughs> you know, 
know, I've been trying to do this for years, and now you've given me the opportunity to do so. <laughs> and, um, that's about it. See ya. This is so sweet. I'm... I'm so glad that everyone here can can could help give you the confidence that you needed to do the things that you wanted to do. I know that getting started, especially creatively, is it's rough and it's scary because you're putting things out and that leaves it open to criticism and um, and especially when you're getting started, it's it's difficult to separate your work from yourself so criticism on what you do ends up feeling like a personal criticism like there's so many stumbling blocks and so many difficult hang-ups but i'm really glad that um that you could find people that could help give you that confidence and that i can be among them good luck <laughs> we have more so every and everyone I want to thank everyone in the community too for like for for making a comfortable place for people. And yeah, we talk about like dicks and, and feet a lot. But I think it's it's still it's a good place. So I, I thank you everyone in, in chat and Everyone who makes art for just being so, so good and kind to each other. And to me. You all are very kind to me. It's meaningful. But hey, we have more art. Check it. Crazy Ace King says, Don't know how someone like Lauren can fit in a rabbit hole, but I'm sure he drags the bunnies out by the ears to examine them thoroughly. <laughs> Look at this. This is awesome. I love I love the sort of um Wan Chi Tong long neck sort of feeling. And the that lantern is awesome. Now this is fantastic. Crazy Ace King. Great work on this. Dragging the rabbit out and just 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 hanging out with the rabbit on my knee. <laughs> It's so cool. It's so cool seeing people's uh, interpretations. There was a part of me that was worried that when the BRB art became a thing, people would start like making a canon Lauren, right? Like constructing one. But I'm still, I'm so glad that people are still willing to take on their own interpretations and try out things like use Lauren as a sort of base for their own creativity. It's awesome. And I and I mean Lauren's design is is fantastic. Kirpe did a fantastic job on Lauren. We have Governor Explosion. We have a piece from Governor Explosion, Space Warrior Jabroni Chan, starring Fred Limes Rev and Vinny uh, and Nort's Mister Alien <laughs> with a with a bong, bongo push. This is, oh my god, am I reading All Tomorrows? <laughs> is Lauren, Lauren reading All Tomorrows? This is fantastic. Oh my god, the dance. It's the Limes dance. <laughs> Great work on this, Governor Explosion. Rev and Mike and Limes are all gonna love this. I don't know if Vinny will see it, but <laughs> we're all gonna love it. Oh my god, could you imagine if all five of us actually ended up like playing a co-op game together that would be a nightmare i'd love it <laughs> i'd love to unite more streamers together great work governor explosion we have another piece from jinx look at this oh this is awesome just color they just say coloring this was fun Ah, oh, comfy. Look at look at the the fluff on the arm, and just the very, <laughs> very soft features. Fantastic. Don't forget to show Vinny cooking with K if that happens. I I doubt that it will happen, but if it does, I absolutely will. It's important. Yeah. No, this is so comfy. Is that androgynous look? I like it. I, I like the androgynous look. 
Very gentle. Thank you so much, Jinx. What else? Oh, we have uh, we have more. Oh, okay, let's see. Is this? It's not. You know, this isn't TOS. We're fine. There's booba, but no female presenting nipple. We're fine. <laughs> Think I'm late for this, but hey, harpies are underrated. Don't worry. You got it in just in time. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ha ha booba. <laughs> and oh, we have more Flapper Lauren from Evan Thorns. Check this out. Oh, I love this. This... This makes Lauren feel... I, I mentioned it before, but it makes her feel like a steampunk character. Like there's a little bit of... Um, a little bit of genetic splicing going on. Like there's some weird science. And the, the rabbit Lauren design. Like these two look like they're friends who are rivals at dinner parties. Makes me want to, to read... Makes me want to read something about them really bad. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Fantastic work, Evan Thorns. This is interesting. Jake Roth decided to... You know what? I'll just let them explain it. I attempted to recreate your lovely BRB screen without using the image itself as input using a guided latent diffusion AI. I think this is art? It's probably art. This is terrifying. What the shit. And it's awesome. It's surprising how how they captured the shape of it. Because you have Lauren sitting and then fit like the arc is the same direction. Yeah, it's Lauren Wad. The single eye. And then but you end up having like a helmet and then another smaller Lauren with again a single eye. They're like, these are supposed to be books on the shelf, but they're wrong. Nice work on this, Jake Roth. Like, I'm impressed about what you were able to get out of the AI. And this will all be retweeted, don't worry. Aww. Golden Storm. This is so cute. Watching Lauren and just feeling comfy. <laughs> This is so precious. You ever just dip your owl in tea? <laughs> so oh, so warm. I could use a bath. I, I could use a bath like this. Comfy. You guys ever take a bath even if you're all like you've already showered that day? Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah he shall be brewed. <laughs> Uh, you can only think of Lauren in the Witcher bathtub pose. Stop. I swear to God. <laughs> Tea hot tub stream when? Literally, I might have to commission Kirpe for that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Golden Storm. This is precious. Ah, oh, comfy. Starry feathers. Starry Feathers always delivers. Let me see. Did we catch all this? Okay, yes. Check it. Crypto Colts Clownery. This stream truly had it all. <laughs> Toss a coin to your owl friend. Oh, Burby of Plenty. <laughs> oh, no. Chat demands chaos. Yeah. It, it, it is surprising how people say how comfy this stream is when it's all just unadulterated chaos. The surprise Lauren is really good. <laughs> Can we get some uh, T-Owl Onos in chat? Please. 
crypto and cults, clown and robes. Clowns and robes, yeah. That, you ever seen a clown in a robe before? We had that today. Lauren is host to me. <laughs> Theater kid in her furry 2022. <laughs> rabbit, rabbit holes. Aw. I wanted to. I went down a rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole, man. I know, I know, I know that it's it's cliche at this point for me to say that I've gone down a rabbit hole. But I do. Okay, look, look. Here's what you need to know. My, like, down the rabbit hole is just an excuse for me to share really strange things with everyone. You need to, that literally is why I ran with it so hard. It's just an excuse. Hey, thanks for the 100 bits lost in bokeh. I don't, I don't remember if I said thank you. <laughs> You've been naughty. <laughs> Daddy, yeah, yes. <laughs> and of course we have the, the colon 3C. Look, look, I, it's how I said, yeah, this is how I saw it for the longest time. <laughs> I hear Fred has an eight pack that he's shredded. Source, trust me. Penis check. Safe. <laughs> Why is this so funny? Kitty Lauren. Aw, aw. Meow. Meow. Purr. We have a filler egg. Back. <laughs> Burb call. Yeah, I'm the owl mom. I'm looking after all of you. Cause you can't fucking look after yourselves. You need sippies. How I imagine the Lauren types. Okay. It's it's mostly because I use cherry blues. I care if I type. Yeah. There. If I just type at things. It's, it's mostly the cherry blues, but I do type rather quickly. Um, Merryweather actually types faster than I do, maddeningly enough. It's all of his 4chan days. <laughs> this world is crazy. This world is crazy. <laughs> Bean and biscuit. Yeah. Do you want a biscuit? <laughs> you want a biscuit? That's my best attempt at, at limes and hackerling. I'd love to get hackerling back on stream. Hackerling was a delight. Thank you very much, Starry Feathers. Great work on this sketch page, as usual. They're all so good. Oh, look at this. Ika Pika. Says, very straight sailor harpy, everyone. Because <laughs> as we all know... All women in anime are straight. Right? Right? I'm sorry for not making much art. My Ika Pika, I swear to God, if you apologize for making less art again, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> this is this is lovely, and you are under no obligation to make art. Even if you just stopped. Your mark would be indelible. I'm sorry for not making much art. <sighs> My next one will be another animation for Mary stream. I must no sleep. <laughs> you say no sleep, and the first thing I think of is Vaporeon was made for sex. God of War 2. God of War was made for sex. No. Sad face. Yes. Happy face. <laughs> Hold on, has anyone here not seen this? God of War 2. God of War was made for sex. Ah, <laughs> uh, we might have to take a detour. Uh, you know what? Let me let me find it real quick. No sleep. Vaporeon. Uh, hopefully, we don't... What? What the fuck? 
It's like it got removed from search results. Vaporeon Team Fortress. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wow. The algorithm buried it. Okay. Oh, hold on. We're going to get... Um, going to get grabbed. Yeah. Please excuse me as I watch my femboy porn in the Intel room as a turtle engineer with 700 ping. Can I join? I'm going to go on the right side. Vaporeon was made for sex. Gardevoir 2. Gardevoir was made for sex. No, sad face. Yes. Happy face. Vaporeon would make a good flashlight. No. Yes. Winky face. Let red win. <laughs> I want to turn in contrav. Demo Man TF2 Vaporeon was made for sex. Most Pokemon would be great for sex. Red, please cap our Intel. I want to turn in the contract. Yeah, most water type Pokemon would be amazing for sex. No, it's leaking got me quake. Just for the love of God, please, I don't want to stay here. Well, so what is a Pokemon that would make an amazing fleshlight? Please double you. Papa Fez would also be amazing for sex. Many any water type Pokemon would make good fleshlights. Why fleshlights? I agree. Stop saying dumbass <laughs> things. <laughs> You're not even making sense. Creamy. Fish, why are Creamy. you so horny? Fish, what the fuck? Fish, why are you so horny? Fish, what the fuck? La Praz would be <laughs> Please just cap it until I'm dying. Me. No. Why? <laughs> Many fire type Pokemon would also be amazing for sexual behavior. Imagine how warm the inside Please just pick would it. Be. I want to finish the contract. I'm trying to think of a fire type that isn't a furry or just an animal. Please stop. Can't think of one. Yes. Good. Cinderace is good for me since I have a thing for rabbits. Please just cap the intel and let Red win, please. Most Pokemon would be amazing to no sexual partner. Cap ours. No, you are closer to winning. Laborian would be the best <laughs> Pokemon for a flashlight. Technically, electric stimulation with gun gun was automatically assigned to see. I never wanted to <laughs> die so badly. So what, General? Do you think had the most general. sexual <laughs> Pokemon <laughs> or the general? I love how you said cap hours, but you pew have a sentry. Not my sentry. Mr. Trap, you're truly a visionary I respect. Stop, I want to end Bar the round. Bunch would be amazing for I know. I can't take. This is the real reason that you stick around for art. Get any more fair? The catfish slime coat can be collected and used. Stop it! Let me end the round. I came to learn from the master of Pokemon porn himself. Please cap. Self. Get me away. I wonder if Salazzo, or however you spell it, would be good or not. Nice drumming. Leave my fucking house. <laughs> I wonder if Hoopal forms would we be good all want for to sex. Leave. Why the fuck are you guys talking about sex with Pokemon? Please, Red Team, I wanna sleep. You think Licky Tongue would be good for Oreo <laughs> and I'm done. Why I'm is that Sasuke? Him. Why is it Licky Tongue and Sasuke? Bitch, I'm not yeah, letting yeah, him yeah, ruin yeah, Pokemon. Yeah. You guys are so horny, it fucking hurts. Where is he on the kick list? Imagine Bell Sprout. I That's want a to die so. Oh, we are you tired, G H O I U H I U R. This server is making me so sad. This was made for the Vorfet. Why just can't? <laughs> no. Mike would die. Why not? Please, for the love of God, cat. Have you seen the beer belly on G? <laughs> Why no, cat? I want to sleep. <laughs> Have you seen <laughs> the clear grass type Pokemon? What's Fuck creature? you, I'm oh, leaving. No. No sleep. No sleep. 
<laughs> oh, I'm amazed that there are people in here who haven't seen that. Uh, congratulations on your induction. I, into what? I don't know. I must... It, it was because I must no sleep. No sleep. <laughs> they are very hetero, seg, very straight, no homo cousins. Yeah, girls and cousins too. Yeah. <laughs> no homo. Didn't know the rabbit hole guy was a streamer. Yeah, surprise. I, um, I've been streaming for about four months now. Four and a half months. That is terrifying to think about. I didn't realize, didn't realize how long I've been doing it. Oh no. Because, because we now have an official Sonic style Lauren, the cover has been updated. <laughs> Down, done with the rab rabbit hole. <laughs> Go, Lauren the Olafride. <laughs> Go inside the darkest absy of the rabbit holes. I will. Thank you, fat nuts. <laughs> and of course, I'm ho holding the monk shit tea. We've seen we've seen this before, but there's the update to make Lauren in line with <laughs> with the style. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. That thank you, Ika Pika, for making sure that we are um, that we're up to date. Now we actually have one more piece. Um, they but they wanted me to share it. Here we go. Check this out. Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, Toxaglossa, who didn't want to post it to their Twitter because they mostly do not safe for work artwork. And it wouldn't fit. But uh, they DM'd me and wanted to wanted me to show it on stream. So Toxaglossa. Here we go. They made some art for the stream. Let me do a quick dick check. <laughs> and then <laughs> Mike's got a smash your pass tally. I'm actually amazed that you granted him the kindness of having more passes than smashes. <laughs> This is amazing. I, I love I love the little man dolphin doodle in there. This is so good. I love the expressions. <laughs> it is a really good rendition of Mask Boy, isn't it? And then Lauren's expression is so it's so expressive. Thank you so much, Toxiclossa. Fantastic work. And I think. That actually is it. Let me double check. Oh, we have one more piece. Crazy Ace King sliding in at the very end. Look at this. Oh, I love this pencil pencil drawing. Oh, there's no Lauren. Uh, there needs to be Lauren. Let there be Lauren. Look at this. A quick one I did of a wise old owl who has seen some shit. This is awesome. I love the the expression. The, the expression of the hands is so good. The talons. Great work, Crazy Ace King. I love this. It's like maddening. I think... I think that wraps it up. I'll make sure to retweet all of this so everyone can see it. That's it. Um, this Saturday... I am planning on having Mary on. If I don't, then we will probably do a crypto stream. We'll see. I will. Um, I'm going to look at my calendar and adjust things as necessary. Well, hey, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And a special thank you to everyone who gave bits and subs and, sur and for supporting my odd little hobby here. I do hope that you enjoyed. It's it's so it's streams are such a pleasure to do, especially because um, it doesn't feel like a chore. I know that streaming um, can get to feel like a chore. I think what helps is I'm doing something a little bit different every day, which is awesome. I like it. And all of you make streaming very enjoyable to do. Let me take a peek. 
Okay. Rev is streaming Bloons Tower Defense 6. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we'll raid Rev. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you again, planning, planning on it, on Saturday. Goodbye. We very... Ooh, do we need a raid message? You know what? If you've got a sub, just give him some feet. That's a good standard. Just, just give him feet. Goodbye.